Hallelujah. There was an old song that my heart was overtaken this morning as in the days. We were gathering the assemblies and they would sing if it had not been for Yahweh on my side. Tell me where would I be? Come on, you got to sing it from your hearts. Come on. Where would I sing that chorus again? If had not been for Yahweh on my side, tell me where, where would I be? Where? Ah, one more time, come on. It, you just don't have it right now. Ever had not been. For Yahweh, on my side, tell me where will I be? Where will I be? You know they will sing, Whoa, he woke me up this day, and he started me in the Torah way. He redeemed me by the dam of Yahshua. And he set me on the right way. Whoa, if it had not been for Yahweh, for Yahweh on my side. Tell me where, where would I be? Where would I be? One more. If it had not, oh, had not been for Yahweh on my side. Tell me where, tell me where, tell me where would I be. Ah, oh, yes. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Shout hallelujah. Come on, lift your voices and shout hallelujah. 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 Oh yes. Thank you. Your mercy is endures forever, God. Hallelujah. Oh yes, God. Hallelujah. As we come before you, Almighty God, your surest name, we stand in your presence because we need deliverance. We ask as we gather here in Yahweh's congregation and you look upon our precious Ahots, Mikaya El. And touch her, her body. You are the one that heals. You are our Rafa. We ask you to heal her mightily and strengthen her bosom. Bring about your Rafa upon her in your sure's name. We ask you to look upon our Ach Lester and our Ach Yaqub there in Jacksonville, Florida. Strengthen, touch their bodies, heal them. We ask you as we gather a special recognition for our Zachin McDonald there in Junction City, Kansas. You look upon this elder, this Zachin, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You touch him above all things in his inward parts to remind him who he is and what you have brought him to Almighty Yah. Heal him, strengthen his inner resolve in all Yisrael, all those to gather with him under his voice, let your mercies and your tremendous imat be poured out upon them. We pray for the whole of Yisraya scattered, those that have joined us on the live video stream and those that have joined us on the live stream. We pray you resolve your healing power upon all Yisraya. That is our cry and our prayer because we know that if you are not on our side, 
where will we be this day? Yeah. So we brought you for the Shabbat, the Shabbaton. We may rejoice in the greatness and the power of our Abba. Through the might, the revelation of his Hamashiach, your sure of the last, redeemer of all of our sins, by the power of his mighty dawn, the blood that was shed for Yisrael. Grant unto us this day knowledge, understanding, wisdom of your Torah, that we may rejoice greatly is our simple prayer. Your sure's name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, we confirm. You may be seated. What a great blessing it is to gather at the dining table of Almighty Yon this Shabbat. This precious Shabbaton he has granted unto us that there is much at his table to eat. He has set before us a table in the midst of all of our enemies. Our Oye, those that despise Yah's Torah, his Hamashiach. So he grants unto his Bokhir, his elect, a table with the delicacies of his bosom. So we can eat, grow thereby, become fat and strong in our resolve to pursue the mandates, the commands of Almighty Yah without falling or failure, that we will stay the course that Yah commands us, and we will do it with a great delight. Our bosom shall be filled with the fatness. Our shards shall be filled with the love of Yah, as it resonates from us, because we know that His Torah is true, and we can have confidence in that. Even in death, we can have confidence in what He says. I do want to greet you all that have joined us, especially our Ak that are in the distant land from us, many thousands of miles away. Ara'ach, Dawid, Nisha, his household there in Birdshead, Scotland. We greet you in Yoshua's name, Ara'ach, Dawid, and his Isha, Susie Anya, there in Britain. Those that are listening in the islands of the sea, all of Yisra'ya, we greet you all. In the most precious name of Yoshua, Hamashiach. You that are listening in these states of America, we greet you all. Your sure smarty name, may the riches of Yah rest upon your homes and the fulfillment of his command. That is, that we take great delight that he has instructed us as a nation and a people. That he has confidence in us as a nation and a people. That he will share his most intermost with us, the depths of his bosom. He has shared that with Yisrael. Yah. He has Pour that out upon us that we may understand and recognize uh, the beauty of his sincerity toward us as a people, a nation, and that we shall oblige him in the same fashion that he has considered us. And above all things, we consider everything he commands us. And we do with a great delight with his hafiz, that we rejoice in it. It is our pleasure that he has asked, requested, and commanded of us that we will be the ambassadors and the representatives of his kingdom authority and his power that resides in the rush, the hands, the place of power and control where the Mishra, the government of Yah, resides in us, Israel. It is vitally important that we, as a nation of people, that we allow the light, the Torah, of the power of Yeshua shine in our bosom in a mighty way. We cannot as a nation, a people, the elect, the call out, in our own determination, we began to select our own ways to pursue Yah. There is only one way. There is not a diversity of the umuna that he put in man. There's only one faith. There's only one immersing. There is only one great and mighty one. And beside Yah there is no other. Lords there are many. And gods there are a plethora of gods. 
There are many Elohim, there are many Belel, Belial, but there is only one great and mighty one. And he has a name and his name is going to resonate with great volume from the four corners of the earth for his people shall call upon him. They shall know him and they shall operate in the power of his Ruach. So God, we greet you all, Yisrael. Be the light of Yah, his Hamashiach, shine upon you and that your mind be consumed with one thing. And that is your sure and him alone. The way of Yah. The way to present unto Yah the offering, the sacrifices of Torah that's pleasing unto Yah. To know how to offer unto him the praises that we offer Yada. Yada is a form of praises of Torah that you truly give thanksgivings unto Yah so that we learn how to Yada. We learn how to Yada in dancing and singing and that we bestow unto him thanksgiving above all things. That is what Yah requests, requires, commands and demands of a people. A people that are led by his Ruach. And when we're led by his Ruach, we have been governed by his stipulations, his commands, and his counsel, his Musa. If we go any other way, it is a facetious, vile, manipulative way that construe us. And in our own logics, our own thinking, we think that we are right and we are wrong. We think that we're doing things that please Yah, and actually we're doing the things that give pleasure to our own flesh for our own advantage. And it cannot be that way, Yisrael. Hallelujah. As the old ones would say, I feel tough. I don't know about you, but in my nephesh, I'm glad. I'm glad that Yah woke me up this morning. He awakened. He called the sound of that name, Taiweed, get up. And I got up, hallelujah. Did not slumber or sleep, but I moved at the command of Yah. He caused the breath of his power, his life, to flow whereby, as Yeremiah would say, the fire was in my bone, I could not lie still. So I had to get up, Israel, to shout the great victories of Almighty Yah, Ar Abba, through the power of Yoshua Hamashiach. And I rejoice greatly in that. What you see here is no pretense in this man. You see what you see. There is no falsehood and pretense. Nothing whatsoever. What you see in all of his flaws, in all of his ways that are demeaning as we perceive it, this is what you see and this is what you will get. For Yah is real. We've had this depiction of Yah, this vile creature of hell. That caters and plays to our own ills and our corruption. We are a corrupt nation of people. With our folly and idiosync. That we all are pursuing a, a path of our own emotions. It is going to bring you down to the depths of hell. And that's a fact. But we are persuaded by our feelings and our emotions will unto us. Jaul said, I am persuaded that there is nothing. I am persuaded that there is nothing that shall divide or separate me from the Ahava of Almighty Yah. I don't give a damn what comes. Yet one of the most potent and powerful enemies against Yah is our own damnable corrupt minds. Our most Damnable twisted emotionalism. We're up with him one moment and then we're down and we're false. You're not going into the kingdom. And that's a fact. You're not going to enter into the presence of Yah. Now you can collaborate in the same spirit you are. 
to give you some kind of appeasement, but it doesn't work. It takes iron to sharpen iron. You cannot sharpen iron with copper. It takes iron. You cannot take Thompson steel and sharpen it with copper or nickel or gold. It takes iron to sharpen iron. And in order to get the Thompson or the molecule structure in steel, for it to become so adamant and to withstand every force against it, it takes a fire. And it takes a hellacious fire. Not just any kind of fire. It takes a hellacious fire. And we don't want the fire. We don't want the fire. It takes a fire beyond the ability for metals to withstand. You see, they have no resistance inside. They will melt. Impurities come out. But they do not harden. They do not become strong and adamant. You're not going to get sharp unless there is steel in the mist. You cannot take a copper file and sharpen the blades of the chainsaws that cut ferociously. It takes a steel. It takes a steel as hard as what you're sharpening. We have to become hardened in the ways of Yah, that we pursue what he commands us. And that there's a great pleasure that of the billions of people that have passed this earth, that he set your name in the vision of his eyes, and we frankly do not give a damn as a nation, a people. We're consumed with everything but what Yah commands. Oh, I will teach on the mark of the beast. Don't worry. We must shape our minds and prepare them to open up for the things that are of Yah in order to receive it. We care about every vile, most twisted, most damnable thing, but we just don't give a damn about the Most High. We are busy in every kind of vile activity. We can talk about every damn thing that does not, do not appertain unto us. It is almost like this. I will give you a scenario. It is almost like an Isha, a wife. She knows every damn thing about everyone. She hears the smallest of matters. But when it comes to her, there is nothing to report on. And so the conversation is so damned manipulative and so shallow. She doesn't consider her own ways. That's what we are. We don't know about the affairs of Yah. Are we not the issue of Yahshua? We don't know about the affairs of Yah, but we know every kind of damnable, corrupt affair that has taken place. We have that kind of spirit that seek out some of the most vilest, most reprehensible things uh, that we give our minds over and to, to study, to learn, uh, to understand and to know. And we literally seek that out. Uh, even from the world, we are seeking our pleasure from the world. Uh, we are not seeking pleasure from the Torah. Listen, I don't give a damn. How you feel toward me. I frankly do not give a damn. How you care as to what I speak. It is what a man is so engaged. He is so dislocated from Yah. That his mind doesn't even consider the things of Yah. That he doesn't even set his own nature in order. And what a man cannot set his own heart in order. Hell he can't set nothing in order. That's why the man that rules in the bed of Yah. He must first of all. His house must be in order. His children must be the pity me and the example of the tough things that must be taught. I sat within the last 24 hours 
and I compiled two very powerful messages. I don't know if I'll ever preach them. And as I looked in the book of Titus, I said to myself, I will let my earshaw, as she gathered with Baptist Zion, she sat and teach from the Torah of that wisdom. But hell, if you can't receive me, you're certainly not going to receive what she said. You fight against me, you're going to fight against her in a more extreme way. And it talks about the elderly, the Zachim women. And one of the most powerful instructions that Yah commands them, that is to teach math tezayon, those things, those things, those things, that thing, those things, which are tough. Excellent. We wonder why the homes today are twisted as hell. Crazy as a damn madman. Folly is exalted. Lies spring forth and every kind of damn corruption is enjoyed. Stupidity and folly is a pinnacle. Clownishness and laughter is exuded above the measures of Yah. You wonder why the prison houses are filled with young men of the diasporas. Their crimes are no different than their counterparts. Because the Ima has learned to do everything wickedly, excluding what Yah commands. When one has a strong man, a Gaba, a warrior, that fights for Yah, and she fights against him with the mouth of the tongue, her Loshon, you're dealing with one of the most vilest of things upon the face of the earth. She is a sepulchre of every vile, most twisted, and the most unclean things. And so when the elder do not teach them the tough things, the word tough, good, and bad vernacular is written in the Torah around 460 times. We're not talking about the excellent. And the wonderful things of Yah. We got time for every damn thing. But Yah. We do not study to make ourselves disciplined before Yah. And you wonder why our young boys. The law of the Avat that he established why. They're falling. Because they have one of the most vilest spirits in them. The spirit that is effeminate. And that's the truth. Well, I will prove it out today. I, I'm going to teach on the mark. Don't worry. I have all corners covered, okay? I simply like to lay down a little foundation or thrust. I, I have to go back to what I taught on last week because I miss some of the most vital things that ought to have been poured out into the mind of Yisrael. Listen, we're not Shemach. We don't Shemach what Yah commands us. We don't hear what Yah commands us because there is not a delight to fulfill the instructions of the Abba. When there's a great pleasure that we know that we are fulfilling the mandates, the instructions of the Torah, we will see one of the most profound and prominent things in the Meshach, the forehead of Yisrael, and that is the power of his eye and the light. Of the wisdom, the understanding uh, of Torah in his uh, Misach. You see the profound utterance of the testimony, the Eduth, the power of Yah that prevails in Yoshua, in his Rush. And everything that proceeds out of his mouth, uh, it is of the excellence of the power of Almighty Yah. It is not based upon folly. 
laughter and stupidity because he has a light in his conscience and there is no power of darkness because uh, what fellowship has light with darkness or uh, what is the concourse of the course of Yah and Belial Yah there is not Yisra'ah there is no association and so uh, the power of the testimony of the government the Mishra of the Russia then that's how a man speaks for whatsoever a man thinketh or thinks that is he or that is what he speaks and thinking comes from the rush it comes from the mind and so what has developed our minds and what is the strength of our minds that is what we will order is that read to us last week the programming i want to read the definition of one word today and it is out the Miriam Webster Dictionary, Volume 6, the latest one. I want to define a word, take a few moments. Because we do not yada, and the reason we don't yada, because we don't experience yada. We don't know, as our Zachin Arabia tried to bring out to us, uh, the power of the seven errands of the voice of yada. We think it's something that just simply appease us. And he spoke unto us that we don't have the ability to understand and hear. Because we will not allow the Torah that he speaks unto us, his utterance, to do what it is supposed to do. How it is sent forth out of the volume of his bosom. And the purpose of his voice. And the characteristics of his voice. What it is meant to do. We don't know because we don't want him to speak to us. So if Yah was to speak to us in a verbal way, we would reject him. And we will blaspheme him. And then it would be woe unto us. I will continue on the mark of the beast. But I want to read a definition. I want to do it quite quickly. It's on the power to control the mind. What is mind control? I want to say, Yisraya, it is not the lies. What we have been taught by the secular, religious whore, Christendom, and all of her vile, corrupt, whoish daughters. It's not that. It's not a chip in one's hands. I don't give a damn how many dogs they put the chip in. It is not about what they call the new world order. There has been a world order since the day that Yoshua HaMashiach, he gave up the Ruach HaChodash. And that's why he embraced us as friends, that we should know all things that appertain unto the power of the high hill, the life of Yah that gives us strength to fight in a military battle against the enemies of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. So that's why he calls us his our friends. We are the beloved of Yah. We are benevolent unto him. And he will with not hold anything from us. So he called us friends, Yisraya. Yeah. So there has always been a world order because the world orders has been mandated, commanded, given over by Yah unto the hands of the wicked. He is the one that has given the mandate to the wicked to rule. He has given them the mandate. He has given them the instructions to rule to seek out one thing. And that is the residue of Yisraya. You will not find the residue of Yisraya unless you find a rush of light or a head that is enlightened by the power of Almighty Yah. I don't give a damn how you talk. I don't give a damn how you say you walk. There must be a power of the Eda. The Eda. It is the purpose of Yah's testimony of life that can only be revealed when Yahshua is real. 
We are a silly nation of people. We love laughter and folly more than we love. There's a reason why. I will bring that out today. More than we love truth. We love fellowship of darkness more than we love the fellowship of light. And that is the truth. I don't give a damn if you reject me. You reject the words, you reject God. I will prove it out. You simply disprove me. That's all I ask you to do, disprove me. Challenge me in what I present today by the Ruach, by what you think that your spirit is giving you clarity and understanding of the matter. It's always that the one here has an upper hand on everyone because I have looked at things that you may not have looked at in a while. So that's why I don't ask you questions because I have an upper hand. You understand? I will answer the questions of your own mind. I want to define this controlling of the mind, what it consists of. What is the definitive of it? I want to begin here. It is, um, it is to control in the archaic or to control the mind. It is to make sure that the mind is always kept in check. When one says check and check it, I mean in chess, uh, it means that the king or the power of the whole board is being assaulted. And the king, there is a direct assault upon the king. So when the king is checked, then the king must make provision to find the safest alternative to preserve the kingdom. And so this is what the mind is for. It is to preserve the power of the Mishra. The laws, the Torah, the instructions, the statutes of a government that no nation of government can overthrow, bring down, to dissolve. No nation of government. So it says to check. Check. And once this beast says check, Mate, there is no resolve, there is no alternative. The mind is in check, mate. The mind cannot dislodge. The king has no move. The king has no alternative. There is no way the king can move. It is to check by duplication. As I read to us the article on programming, and everything today is duplicate. Whether you watch this most apprehensible, vile murder of Hashotan television, you see the same kinds of lies, corruption 24-7 on every channel. It is nothing but a duplication. And that is what this whore has done as... My Zachin uh, McDonald said to me on last week when he called, uh, he says to me, Re'ach, I want you to understand, there must be a repetitive duplication constantly. It must be a repetitiveness and one's mind, one's conscience, one's perception in order to create the kind of image, the God, the circumstances whereby their minds are given over to that manifesto. It is not given over unto Almighty Yah. It is to check. It is to control by duplication, Yisraya. It also incorporates the subtleties or that which is suitable to control as in an experiment. So in order for you to control, you must experiment with the minds of the people. That's why you find programs on television, they're always evolving. I'm saying this because there's something I want to point out to show you the power of this mark in the mind of man, that it is a purpose assault on the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach on Yisra'ya. Because when Hashotan said to Yeshua there in Lucas 4 and Matitiya, he says, if you will bow down, if you will give substance and credence unto me, if you will allow the rule of my government to preside in this body, this clay of man, 
He said, the kingdoms, I will grant it unto you. Uh, and you shall be the ruler, of one that has dominion. That is what Mishra is. It is the one that has dominion and power to control, to establish. Uh, that is what Mishra is. It is the domination. And what dominates our minds today, Yisra'ya? What is the most dominant power in our minds today? What is the most dominant force that is resurrected out of our bosoms? We're dealing with the government. We're dealing with the mark of a government. We must understand. We must understand the characteristics of the government. And if we don't understand the characteristics of the government, we will not be able to identify the power of that government to rule in our minds. We won't. And that's the truth, Yisrael. Hallelujah. It is to exercise restraint. So we are restrained from the activities of Yah. To exercise a restraint for the purpose of really directing influence over. So what the enemy does, uh, he gives us things according to our flesh to call, cause us to be restrained from our pursuit of the things of Yah. That he may take control over our minds, that he may take control over our will, he may take control over the purpose of our mind to influence us, that we will reject the very mandate of Yah. And that when He commands us, it has, no, it has no beauty to that at all because we don't see the purpose of that Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. It is also regulations or direction in the use of application that it may result actually in the purpose of what that regulation is emphasizing. So when there is a regulation, there is a purpose for the regulation. You may not know all the details of it, but it is to bring about a resolve because it is emphasizing a particular thing. And so the kingdoms of the world, when Yah speaks to us in the volume of the Torah, He is trying to create something in us to emphasize the power and the beauty of the kingdom of Yah. And so it is with this vile nature of this one. That will present the marking on the beast and man. It is a demented mind where the kingdom has a contention against Yah. It is a continuous battle against Yah. We sense these battles in us. It's not that we're battling against us. We're battling against Yah. And Yah commands us what to do. There is something in our kingdom, in our minds that is internal that we don't do what your show commands us to do we're not a people that confess our faults and our ills and our weaknesses before each other because we're full of arrogance and we're pride and we're haughty as a damn jezebel that's what we are we are backslidden whore you wonder why your conditions never change and you never improve you wonder why we're twisted as a damn bed bug wild and crazy as hell because we never identify the things in us, but we, we are so apt to identify everything in others. Uh, and we can see we know about everyone else's damn business. Uh, and we don't even mind our own storehouse. You are a twisted damn individual. Yeah. When you are mindful of everyone else's damn business and you're not mindful of yours. Uh, and we are slut and wicked as hell. Uh, something is wrong in your damn mind. I don't give a damn who you are. You're not even defending the house of Yah. There's no defense in your bosom. Joel said the power of my desire is to know Yah. And in the power of his death and the power of your shoes resurrection. And you resurrect some of the most damned of the vilest things of hell. Sin and the corruption of the world. You are twisted as hell. I don't give a damn who you are. Don't come to me with that. Go get the other individual. That's, that's always been my mandate. You come to me, go get the other one. Come here, Zachim, we will find out. That's the way it should be. 
if it had not been for y'all our sauce this morning, then where would we be? I was looking this morning. I don't read the obituaries. And one of the men that I grew up with, his name was Michael McGill. The last time I saw him, he saw me. We hadn't seen each other in years. He saw me, he grabbed me, embraced me. That's the way we were in those days. We were friends. I can't say that Michael McGill ever done me wrong in all the years I knew him. We did corrupt things together, but he never double-crossed me. Michael McGill was one of those in the early 70s crying out with the tune of Rap Brown, and speaking out against the very oppressive nature of even this nation. He was. And he went to prison, federal prison, for six years. And even though the last time I saw him, he embraced me and he wanted to give me something. I said, come on, Michael. I don't need anything. He said, come on, take something, bro. Just take something. He was a little merchant selling clothing, new clothing and things like that. He said, here, take this, take that. I said, no, I'm not going to take it. I said, this is how you make your living, man. I said, I got more shirts than I will ever wear. He said, but this is what I want to do for you. And so I relented because I had the sense of the things that we had been brought up in and our connection, our unified nature with each other. And I took the gift from him. And so when I look this morning, I don't read that. Honestly, I do not. And when I turned, there he was, his picture. I said to my Ishaw, come and see. And he has, from this life, he has expired. And so shall we as well. And the first thing, my heart, oh yeah, my. Once we leave this realm here, I don't give a damn what a man or a woman says over the corpse. There must be a witness of your life and it must testify of you. If your life testify, you are a liar and a deceiver. Woe unto you. Because it will testify what you truly are. I want to read two more applications of this definitive. It means a means or anything by means or method, methodology of controlling. One that controls, uh, it is the power of one that controls us uh, to program us for the purpose of one's own determination, what is determinate, uh, what is the direction or the way that one would have one to go. Something that affords a standard of comparison, of mean, of verification. Group in control, or you bring groups together, almost like Pavlo, you offer different things to the dog, and the dog learns how to respond according to how you have trained the dog. And so the power of this kingdom has trained us to respond that which is appropriate unto the adoration or admiring of the power of the rule in our minds, that it is against Yah and has disdain for Yah. How has that come about? How has and how have the power and the power that be brought this to induce this into us that it has laid out the foundation in us of the mark of a vile spirit, a mind that is corrupt, a mind that has no agenda of Torah, a mind that delights not in Torah, a mind that cannot comprehend Torah. How does one orchestrate, uh, prepare us to accept to receive uh, that kind of instruction? The minds that turn away from you. And the subtlety of hell, how short time was the most subtle. He was subtle in all of his application, his ways. He was the most subtle creature. 
And those things that we hide in our bosom, they're subtle. They're subtle things. We're not even aware of them. They erupt. And we don't even know they have erupted. And when they erupt, they take control over us. And we do not know how to recluse ourselves from it to gain back the momentum that that thing has taken control of us. And so we find ourselves in this ter terrain or this territory whereby there is no thought of Yah. We're not even thinking of Yah. And anything of Yah that speaks to us or acknowledge us, we, we, we are insulted by it. So we assault that, not in our verbiage, but our actions and our ways. And we insult Yah more by our actions and our ways than anything we can do. Yahshua said, if you have, uh, if you love me, uh, then do what I command you to do. If you love Yah, then you do what Yah commands you to do. You do with a great delight. If you love Yah, if He give us a structure, every government has a structure, then you obey them that have the rule, or they have the Mishra to instruct you in the council of all Maria. You obey them. Isn't that so on the job? Do you go and take that tremendous vehicle and take it in the direction you want to? Or is there a power to govern you? And isn't there a power that governs that government that governs you? And isn't there a power that governs the government that governs you that governs that one? And we're such a people of folly. And that's why the enemy knows. He knows that through the subtlety of our own uh, silliness, like silly women... And we are a silly woman. We are the bride of Yeshua. We are a damn silly woman. We are led with sin. And so the deceivers of hell, the workings of the beast and man, it enter in and it leads us astray into every kind of damn folly it is. You will know the side of those that are literally walking with the capacity of the mark of the beast. Can I direct our attention to some Torah? This is definitive of mind control or the controlling of one's mind. I'm not going to read it all. So I took out of this and I pieced together some of the definitives. When a word or when there is something that is the definitive, a definitive, it simply means that it is an absolute. It cannot be defined any other way. That is the total or the end resolve of the matter. You understand? So it's settled. There are no questions to be asked. There's no reason to question. And so there's a power that rules in the mind, in the rush of man. And what it does, it begins to lay the eggs of, so that they may become fertilized. And when the eggs began to become fertilized, they began to produce offsprings. I want to return back to Gilead, our revelation. I simply did not feel comfortable with even the way that I left things off on last Shabbat because there were those... Uh, they may not understand, but I have gotten response from the teaching. And there are those that say this has been one of the most enriched experiences that they have had in Torah and the knowledge of even the mark of the beast. They've never heard it this way. Because it's simple. I want to begin here in Revelation chapter 17 verse 4. This is what it says. And the woman, what is the woman? Uh, she, is the, she is the gift of Yah. She is the incubator of life. She is the incubator of life, not the man. She is the incubator. He is the power, the source to pro-generate life. And so Yah identifies this religious scarlet with a woman. She is the incubator of life. She produces, uh, she, she monitors life. She cares for life. Uh, she gives the breath to life. Uh, and life comes forth out of her. We are the woman of Yahshua. We give life to his testimony. We give power to his testimony. And if we have no life of that power of the testimony, if that's not the, if that's not the controlling fact of our Rosh, uh, then what are we? He saw this woman. He saw this ish, this woman. And she was dressed in a way that represented uh, the covenant blessing uh, of the Levi. She was decked in this uh, colorful garment. And she had gold and precious uh, stones and all kinds of jewels that were incomprehensible. And she had something in her hand that was so identifiable. She had a cup. She had a cup. Yoshua says to us, he said, this cup... That I drink from. 
You all must drink from this cup. Was he governed by the Father? The Abba was his head. So is Yoshua the head of man. He said this cup, the same cup you all must drink from this cup. We don't like that cup because it doesn't look like this cup. It is a cup that is golden. It, 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 is, it, is, it is easily to receive. It is, a, it is adorable. And so our minds pierce upon this cup. But the cup, that body, it was one that was afflicted. And has suffered. It was marred more than any man. And after the abuse, it had nothing that was attractive about it. No one was attracted unto that. But there is this religious prostitute. She has a cup in her hand. And Yah says, it is male. It's full. Not partial. It is male. It is filled to the brim. It is overflowing. And there is nothing that is left without. There is no space for anything else, Yisrael. There is an abundance. That's why it's flowing over. She had a cup. In, the, in her hand. And it was full. Look what it says. It was full of abominations. He says it was full of. Pichulach. Pichulach. Some of the most detestable. Most vilest. Most unclean things. The most vilest of idolatry. Not the Toeba. But the Pichulach. Not to Abar, it was some of the most reprehensible, reprehensible, violence of the idolatrous scheme in one's mind. That's what the cup, that's her nature, that's what she feeds, that's what she gives. It was full of abomination, and it says it was full of filthiness. And you all, if you can remember, as we have taught on the Nidah, the filthiness, the Nidah is a filthy ministerial rag of a woman. That has been trotted under the pegula, on the pig's dung. And that's what a cup, although it looks charming and beautiful. It looks right, her perceptions, her ideology. It looks as though that is right because it gives credence to you and your own substance. It calls you to eat of your own nature. That's what a damn pig will do. A pegula. It will eat anything. It will eat anything. It is a vile thing. It is one of the most vilest of reprehensible things upon the face of the earth. That's what it is. And so he saw this in this nita, this vile, reprehensible, unclean rag. Tell me where some of the most vilest, some of the most reprehensible, some of the most idolatrous things take place and where their actions are performed here. A mind. Arush, the mark of our mind is a cauldron of every kind of damn vile thing. That's why we must denounce it. And the only way you're going to denounce it, you must acknowledge your damn wicked ways. The mind of a short he cannot acknowledge his ways. It is a mind of a murderer. It is a mind that's full of shakas and lies. It is a government, it is a rule that speaks lies. And every kind of vile thing to you, and you buy it. You don't buy truth. You buy lies. You buy your own damn lies. And your own corruption. You buy it. And you don't buy the truth of Yah. You don't buy his Torah. Don't worry, I'm going to break this down today. Get mad, find you someone else. I don't give a damn. You cannot comprehend the voice of Yah if you heard it. Zarkane is going to bring that out to us. I can't wait to Khatve Imat. He says, uh, it was full of every kind of idolatrous, nida, immorality. And he says, uh, and it was all based in the proudness of her zana, her fornication. She is uh, a prostitute. And that is what zana is. Zana, it is a it is a cult prostitute, and we all enter into her house, her kingdom, her mindset, and we sell ourselves as a damn prostitute. To what man? To our most pinyani emotions and our feelings. 
That's why they're going to resort to Yah that way, my, my, uh, my, my achot and ach. That's why when they see the coming of Yahshua, this man is going to cause them to assault him. That's why when they see you coming, talking about Yah, they immediately they want to assault you. They build up their defense. They want to attack your words, your saying, your speech, your actions, your attitude. They want to attack that. They want to defend this house of ill repute, this mind, because it's full of ill repute. It is a mind that prostitutes itself to every kind of damn ideology and every kind of damnable concept of God so mighty. So she begins this process by programming us. That's why there must be the give out the strong man, uh, that the homes, uh, even this man, if he's strong, uh, his strength, his power, this man, is he strong, his power will be an influence upon this daughter, Tiziah, that has no husband. Yeah. Because in their communicate with the wives, uh, they will see the strength of the beauty of the wives. Uh, and when then they communicate, they see the damn father and the strength of the most damnable twisted mind. Uh, they don't give a damn about him. They will respect him. Uh, they will give a damn about him. I break it down. I don't give a damn if you agree with it. I don't give a damn if you say hallelujah. It makes me no damn different. We're nothing like but prostitutes. We sell our damn mind for what? Not a damn thing. I wish I had this. For what? For what? I will mind, don't try me. That's what a cult prostitute is. She doesn't give a damn. You must understand that Zana just were not women. They were men too. I'll bring it on out, don't worry. I got something for us today. And I'm gonna finish the course. Until my bosom is satisfied. So it wasn't just a woman. It was a man. And they would dress the men in a way that they would be appealing. And men wanted the men. You understand? Hallelujah. See, a man's mind today is governed by a spirit that he is removed from the place of authority that Yah commands him. Has been the Rush. Has been the Savior. He must be that. Hallelujah. And so his mind is not being, or it doesn't function by the commands of the mandate of Yah. He doesn't orchestrate the true reality of Torah. Yahshua is not a visible testimony in his life. Yisrael. That's all right. I got, I, I got your number. Don't worry. Hallelujah. So he saw this most formidable beast, this thing that has come out of the depths of every kind of corrupt ideology that defies Yah. And what Yokohan, as he realized, he had to go back to the old way. As the old folks would say, take me back to the old way. Go back to the Zachin. Those of the, my forefather. And he had to restore his mind by way of remembrance. The Zachach, the memorial, the Zichron, restored to his mind. Did he saw something that was so profound on this Jezebel? He saw something in, in, the, in, in the zenith of her rush. He says in the next verse, verse 5, he said, And upon her mesach, upon her forehead, he said, was Hashem, the name. It was a profound name. It was a name that embodies Himi Yisraya. The name of this Jezebel embodies the traits, the characteristics of of the utterance out of the mouth of Yachahanan. The name was so, it was such a startling name. He saw the name of her actions, her activities, her ways, her mind. What flowing from it, he saw it as he could see in this vision. He could see the very, he could see to the ends of the earth. He said, I saw this dirty thing. And there was something, a name, it was hatab, it was engraved, it was prescribed. He said, in her misach, in her forehead, in her rush, the power, the controller, nothing else can come forth out of her but this. He said, I saw the very nature of this thing. He said, I saw this woman, she was one of lots, mystery. She was secretive. That's our mindset today, isn't it? We are so damn secretive with our sins. I'm revealing the mark. 
It's not a damn chip, these damn dogs, these lehays and these faggot dogs of hell telling you it's that. Yah hasn't shown them a damn thing. They are men of God, but they are not messengers of Yah. These damn pretty hens and the titty snake jakes, Yah hasn't shown them a damn thing. They are men of God. I will identify them as men of God, the Farrakhans and all. But they are not messengers of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. He says she was full of, uh, I saw the name, that's mystery and secretive, heart. And we are people that hide the secret sins, not only of ourselves. We have the secret sins of one another. That's not what Yeshua come to do. He came to destroy the works of darkness. And you take your secret sins and you hide them where? Not in this damn thing. You hide them here. And you seek the counselors of the counselor. You know, one in a country, if I'm in uh, a place like, say, Iran, and if I can get to the counselor, although I'm in, I've been charged with the sin, then there's a covering there, the counselor, the ambassador, which they can't just come in and get me unless the, amb unless the ambassador says, all right, let's look at this case, let's see the, what it is. As long as I stay there, I'm all right. There's no other place on the face of the earth but one other place, and this is a religious whore. And her name is Catholicism, whereby you can go into the conclave of their, of their, of their outposts, and as long as you are there, then you're protected. You, you can confess your sins and your faults to these faggot things they call priests, that's why they was raping all these boys in America. That's why these damn faggot priests, where they get that from, I will show you. It's in the book. I'll leave no stone unturned today, hallelujah. She's full of mystery and secretive matterism. And we are secretive people. Even our own damn faults, we were not. Uh, even Hashatan, uh, he was one, he was a liar and a murderer from the beginning, was he not? Uh, why? Because he did not dwell in Torah. He did not walk in the light of truth. He did not allow his mind to be immersed uh, in the power of Almighty Yah. He, see, he saw the excellent works. So come on, look out there. Don't you see the excellence of Yah? Uh, it's crazy. It's just, it, it, it's spectacular. One day in these fleshly bodies, you won't see that. So I'll give you our total for all things. One day, my Amen, we won't see that. I'm not going to allow the secretive of the dark works of hell. That's what Chava did. She allowed the secretive communicates with Hashatan. When your own damn mind talks to you and you allow it to mock your conscience, you're damn secretive. You hide some of the most vilest. And the most wickedest of things. In those occult or the cold prostitution houses, they did some of the most vilest, some of the most wickedest things that should not have been mentioned outside of the walls. And there was a lot or a secretive order whereby they could not mention that. And they, it was not just a, a sexual thing, but it was a worship or a, a, a God sense of, of worshiping God and pleasing the gods. And they, and they gave their bodies to please the gods. So the gods would reproduce in them uh, through these vile individuals. And we've given our mind to the damn God of the world uh, to allow his mark to be engraved in our mind because we can't think outside uh, of that realm. We think in that realm. Uh, we act in that realm. And we don't act in the realm of the Torah. In the mandates of Almighty Yahweh, Israel. And so we hold fast to our secretive uh, little wickedness, our little things that are vile. They're evil. They're vile. I will confess my faults to the ark. I do it all the time. I don't hide a damn thing. Because I know if you hide it, the root is that there's something. If it's right, you want to share it with everyone. When it's wrong, if it's right. If it's evil, you don't want nobody to know. Yeah. 
So that's why you don't want about it. No. Because you're evil. And you're wicked. Your heart is a storing con clay for the princes, the powers of the earth to manipulate and to operate and to administer the mark of the mark of the beast. It's a mark that hates Yah. It's a man that despises Yah. It's a man that says, I don't want to hear that damn talk. It's a man that rejects the name of Yahshua HaMashiach and buys the lies of the corrupt ones that created the damn image of this vile thing they call Jesus. They're Christo, they're Christ. Damn, they're Christo. Damn, they're Christ. Damn, they're Jesus. Hallelujah. She was also known as Bavir. Confusion. You're so confused, hell, you don't know which way to turn. She was known as Bavir. The abundance. In Bavir, isn't there an abundance in this nation? Is not in our confused mind a, an abundance of folly, stupidity, words that profit us not one bit, actions and deeds do not promote the growth of Yah, the testimony of Yahshua. He says she was known as Bebe, the Rah, the great, the abundance, much, exceedingly. He gives us more than Change of raiment, doesn't he? We have bread today. I got shoes that I can't wear them on. I got suits that my wife made me six, seven years, eight years ago. I can't, don't even wear them. I got socks that I never wear because I got so many pairs. But yet he gives us more than that. He gives us more than just natural food for our flesh, doesn't he? He gives us the lechem, the bread. The fine flowers that have been sifted and have gone through the sifter that we can offer one thing that is the sacrifice of Toda unto Yah. We can offer up the meal offering unto Yah by the power of His word, His truth. You understand? Hallelujah. He says, uh, and she was known as Bevel. She was confused, but in all of her confusion, fusion, she was still great. She was robbed. She still had abundance. Her ways were somewhat disturbing, but that's all right. And also she was the Ima. She was the mother. A mother's womb is uh, the incubating chamber of progeneration to produce life. A mother's, an Ima, an Isha womb is that life begins from the fertilization of the ish. Her womb is the place of life. Her womb is the place of concept. Our being is the place of life, the concept of the life giver. And it begins here, when this is enlightened. When our minds are enlightened, it brings forth Light. She is the mother of all kinds of zana, of holotry. She is the one that creates all kinds of idolatrous concepts that you prostitute and you sell yourself to those ideas, those concepts, not understanding that they are diseases that are transmitted. Your says to Yisraeli, he said, where have I seen you the land that you shall overpower the people, not by some damn shotguns or AK-47, not by a damn 45, not by a tanker. He said, I shall by the power of my right hand, by the power of the testimony of that which shall come, I will drive them out and you will go to take the land and he warns them, do not learn, do not become, do not lahag, do not learn the ways of those gleim, the heathens, whereby drive them out before your face. And so the heathen says, I will bombard. I will repeat repetitively as my zachin, their injunction city, my zachin, my elder, McDonald said to me the other night, 
Reach don't stop. Repeat and repeat. Repeat and repeat. Repeat and repeat. And I shall. Do that for the wise counsel. He is one of the few men that when he talk, I listen. He is one of only of a few men that when he talks, I listen. That's the truth. Hallelujah. That I've met from outside the parameter of this fellowship and this labor here. He says she is the mother of hollow tree. And she is the mother of pitbull. She is the mother of abomination. She is the mother, she is the incubating chamber of that which is most vile and foul that should be rejected. You should not touch it. You should not even lay your tongue on it. You should not allow it to take prominence, preeminence, power, strength in your lab, in your lib, in your love. In your man, you should not even allow that to be Yisraya. He calls it pig, pig bull, vile. She's the mother of that. Her mind produces this substance constantly. It is a mind at a mark that causes one not to even think on Yah, not to even consider Yah in their daily activities. That we are drawn to the nature of beasts and the apprehension of Yah like man. We can see with Ka'an and his brother Habel that he rose up because of the pure offerings. That Yah had respect unto Habel. That he rose up and slew his earth. And we can see out of the lineage what began to flow the mind. The foul nature, the corruption. And that is the mind that is mocked at that mind. Uh, until that mind is eradicated upon the earth, uh, then there shall be no rest to Hebel, to his blood. And until that mind is, he, is totally eradicated, there will be no rest in the body of your sure Hamashiach Yisraya. And the only way we're going to restore that mind. The only way we go to get the understanding of the mind. We think that Yah just commanded us uh, under the power of the dam of Yahshua to be perfect. Uh, he commanded us under the writings of the Torah to be perfect, Yisrael. Because when a man delighted, when he walked uh, in the government, the Mishra of Yah, when he more walked uh, in, in, the, in the stipulations, the commands of Omar Yah, he walked as a perfect man. Uh, he was Yosha, he was upright. Uh, he was a Sadiq man, he was just. Uh, his mind... Uh, his mind was overcome with the beauty of Yah and Torah. Our minds today are overcome with every kind of pigul. We allow it to be birthed in us. And what we do, listen to me, we want to sow that in others. So we will speak the same lies to this one, to that one, to that one, to this one. We will speak the most vilest and uncorrupt, the most corrupt things to one another. And that's not Yah. And we will trust impose and transpose our own vile emotion, our own nature in others and upon others. How? By the power of our words. By the power of our kingdom ruler. What's ruling here? That's why we must be careful. We must be slow to speak. We must first of all be quick to hear and slow to speak. And we are a damn nation of people who have been learned to be slow to hear and we are quick to speak our damn minds. It is my aim, it is truth. Yeah. Quiet. Yeah. I like that. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm not impressed with the Omen, the Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm impressed that it absorbed in our mind because I'm laboring hard here. Yeah. And my pay is simply my delight that Yah, that one hurt. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. She is the mother of Pegul, of the earth. Are we as a nation individually, are we not the earthen vessels? 
In every house, there's a diversity of vessels. Vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of clay, earth, vessels of honor, and vessels of dishonor. You tell me in the house of Yisra'ya there has not been vessels of dishonor? You tell me there has not been vessels or a vessel of honor? There have been vessels of dishonor, there have been vessels of honor, there have been vessels of gold. Kings, when they saw, the, saw this religious power of corruption in the minds of the people, they would tear down their altars and the Be'el, the structures. They would. We got to return back to the Mishra of Yah. I want to direct our attention quickly here. In the book of Weira, I want to show you why we have this kind of pandemic of fagism, butch bulldaggerism, whoreism, every kind of vile thing because uh, it has been programmed in the minds. They're programming your children, they're programming you. It's all right. I judge no man. I'm a spiritual man. I judge every damn thing that comes before me. I judge my thoughts, I judge your thoughts, I judge your actions, I judge your grins, I judge your smiles, I judge every damn thing. But a man is spiritually judge all things, and he is not judged, he is not condemned by any man. He will stand that man, come up, because when we get the mind of your sure, that is the mind that judge. Well, you don't judge a damn thing because you have the mind uh, of the beast. Uh, a beast doesn't judge a damn thing. When that, uh, when that damn Billy goes to make babies, uh, when he smell uh, the fragrance and the fragrance uh, of this time of season, he doesn't give a damn if it's his daughter, his granddaughter, he doesn't give a damn. When that big bull goes out of them, that feel, uh, he doesn't give a damn who they are. Those rams begun to have that sense in them. They don't give a damn. Isn't that the nature of man today? They don't give a damn about the purity and the chastity of Yah. And women are the same damn way. They don't give a damn. They will obey a man or a job. But they cannot obey her rush. A damn Jesse pill. And if you do that, you won. All right, give me some hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if a man doesn't obey his rush, he's a damn pig. Trying to satisfy his flesh. Writings, instructions to us in Leviticus, we year round. Yah says, I instruct you in. My Misha, Proverbs, my Hukha, statutes, prescribed limitations. First of all, he says, I want to show you this mother, what she produced. And what her programming is producing in your children. There were two that were here that I embraced the little one as my son. And the daughter as my own daughter. Although we have no biological children. And I loved them. But the mother was a Jezebel. And that thing that she embraced was not even a man. And today she is a butch bull dagger. And he is a damn perverted faggot. That's what he is. Well, how is that? Oh, they did not learn that here. Your children are learning things. They're not learning it here. And they're not learning from the messenger of Yah. They're dealing with powers and princes. And we're so damn ignorant. We know every damn thing, but we don't guard even the minds of our children. The Ima, the old or the elder are so damn lazy. So damn full of folly. They can grin and laugh all damn day. We can eat all damn day and satisfy our sweet tooth. We're like greedy damn pigul, like damn pigs. But they take time to teach the bath, the tizayon. The proper instruction, the proper ways of Yah. She doesn't give a damn, so she can't teach her damn thing. The Zabkain, in their actions, their ways, in their fellowship with the Ark, they're not teaching them a damn thing how, how to give themselves for their wives and their children because they are the protectors and the providers of the house of Yisrael. Yeah. And so they don't know a damn thing today. 
And so if there is no rule, there's a void. And the void must be filled. That's the rule of law, the void must be filled. There is nothing that is empty. There's something that where there's some kind of molecular structure. The void must be filled. He says here, the writings of Yah as he uttered in the, in the bosom and the, of Moshe, that the ears of Aharon would proclaim here in Leviticus, we hear 18.22. He said, you shall not shachab. I know it says L-I-E there, doesn't it? You see this language that we're in? But Yah said, you shall not shachab. You shall not have any kind of intimacy of sexual relationship with mankind. A man shall not lay with a zakha, mankind, like with uh, womankind, Yeshua. Yah says that a man, I'm reading this to show you she's the mother of the power of her rule, her lordship, her beelship. It is one of the filthiest things upon the earth. And she governs the mind by filthy insinuations, filthy things that our minds think on. And they're filling the airways with faggots, kids kissing. I was looking through the chronicles of the news the other day. And I saw this damn filthy faggot man with his neck, his eyes closed, and another faggot kissing his neck. And it says in the article, I will not read some damn trash like that, that they were making out. You may read it. I'm not going to allow that spirit to even enter into my mind. You may read the damn filth. And this damn faggot man is neck up and stand there in love. I was saying to my wife the other night, I say, Ishaw Raphael. This article says, hey, I just read the capture of the article. I will not even read this vile stuff. It says that, quote, homosexuals uh, make better parents, uh, make better parents, homosexuals make better parents uh, than uh, the originality of what parents were by Yah. That's what it said, my bad. I would not even give Yah's mind to this damn filth. This is what mothers, this is what put the seed, this is what put the fertilization to what's in the minds of this generation. That's why you can't touch these damn unclean things. You got to come out of her, my people. Damn foggy kissing one's neck. Yah says a man doesn't lay with another man. You don't live with a man like you do with womankind. There's a difference with a man and a woman. Yeah. Isn't that what's being spilled today in the magazine? They are blurring the gender today. That's why I want to say, you guys, I'm not a damn guy. Don't you call me a damn guy. Yeah. I'm not a damn fool. I may be a good, but I'm not a damn fool. The fool says it is hard to know to you. Yeah. Blow you. So they're blurring the dress of men, dressed like a damn faggot, dressed with your tight pants. She's the mother of all abominations. These damn faggot men letting their daughters dress like whores, letting them dress dressing like a, a, a whiskey two-dollar slot. And the man ain't worth a damn. Hallelujah. I'm moving. A man. We hear 1822, you shall not lie, you shall not shuck up with mankind. And today men are removing themselves from the, even the nature of a man. Thinking about men, warning other men. There are a lot of young boys in school today, the school system is teaching them that. Uh, you, you know, it's all right to do that. It's all right. Uh, you're letting yourself express yourself. And they don't even know, they don't even understand why they're doing it. It's the power of that government. It's the power of the beast. How do I know? Do you, do you see the little rams get on top of each other out there? You see the female? Yes, you do. You see the little rams get on top of each other. You see the little goats down here get on top of each other. It's not a performance, but they get on top of each other. They get on top of each other. The bulls get on top of bulls. The goats get on top of goats, the rams get on rams, and the billies get on billies, but they don't go, they don't enter in, Yisra'ya. Yeah. They're performing, they understand the act is important. And so these, in these houses, and these damn Christian, and Muslim, and Hindus, and Buddhists, 
and these damn Moors temples and the Jewish temples, these filthy houses of ill repute. They're filthy and they're wicked. You understand? They're filthy. The little boys and girls come and they play and they lay and they eat and they play and they leave and they play with each other. The women dress like filthy whores and the boys dress like effeminate faggots. Pants falling down their ass. I'm going to finish here today one way or the other. If I die, I die. He says uh, in verse 1 and in, in verse 22, you should not lie with mankind like you do with one of the kind. He says it is a, it is a, a to'eba, it is an abomination unto Yah. It is wickedness, it is vile. One of the most prominent things that this government today is promoting, isn't it? Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, he's telling the countries in Africa that it's all right to be faggots. It is. They're promoting this agenda of this woman, of this beastly government. Listen to what Yah says about it. That's what they're doing. You don't get funds from us, from Uganda, poor nations. We will not give you funds because it is, uh, you, you know, it is, um, it is, you're not fulfilling human rights. These damn dirty bastards in Washington, they'll let China oppress people. They tell them they can have a one, one baby policy. If you have more than one child in China, you cannot get the benefits of the government. They tell them that. It is a damn communist nation. And they buy every damn thing. They're in the bed with a dirty whore, they commit prostitution. And they gather in their conclaves and every kind of damn filthy thing take place, Yisraya. And that is the truth. They're dirty, wicked bastards. Uh, they incorporate their lots, their mystery, their secrets, uh, and they try uh, secretive, uh, try to uh, try to impart that in the minds of the people. And we're such damn ignorant individuals. Uh, we don't know how to hear the message of Yah because uh, if a message of Yah slap you in the damn face, you will not even know that he's the true messenger of Yah. You hear Yah slapping us with his Torah. He's trying to slap some damn sense into us. Uh, Granny will go upside my head and say, boy, I'm trying to slap some sense into your damn foolish head. We won't even know if y'all spoke to us. Look at this. Everything we see today, you tell me the government should be supporting men, wearing, marrying men. I don't even want to say that damn filth, Yisraya. A woman married another damn beast. Yah says the Yisraya, you will know the last days, these things shall be. You will see, uh, you will see this mother, it is almost like plants in the field. Uh, it is one thing about plants in the field, or oh, especially weeds. Uh, when there's a chance for them to grow, they, they, they produce, uh, they pollinate so quickly, they pollinate one another. Some plants have a female and a male type of DNA, and they just pollinate uh, millions of seeds because they do not want you to eradicate them. So it is with this world today. They're duplicating and they, it's, it's, it's hybrid and synthetic. And so they're trying to save themselves. We must save ourselves from this generation. And you began in your Rosh Yisrayam. Here's where this bestiality comes from in this vile nature today. In verse 23, he said, Neither shall you lay with any what beast does it say? A behemoth. That's what we are dealing with, the behemoth of the beast, the mark of the beast. Uh, he said, you shall not lay with the beast. Uh, he said, to talk me, to become unclean, uh, to bathe yourself with the minister of filthy rag of a woman. Who wants to do that? Who wants to take a rag of a woman uh, doing her administration? Take that rag, uh, let it set for 10, 12 days, uh, and then wash your face with it. Who wants to do that? Uh, who wants to take that damn rag uh, and then put it down for a plate uh, and eat off of that damn filthy rag? Who wants that? That is what the May is. That is what the Nidah is. Now these damn prosperity dogs are not going to tell you this. They play on the people. They rob them. I looked at 10 of the most richest, what they call preachers in America. These bastards live in $10 million mansions, drive bentless. And the most of the people in these whole houses are people that their livings are, are not even substantial. And they don't create a damn thing but what they call ministries in their name. Their own Lear jets and private airstrips. They're going to burn in hell. Oh, devil, TDJ, your damn kingdom, Billy Hen, is coming down. 
Oh, devil, you grinning old sting devil. Your kingdom coming down, oh, Bishop Long. You faggot bestiality bastard. You vow thing of hell, you pedophilia dogs. Your kingdom's coming down, they're coming down. That's why Yah says in that day, they're going to cast their gold and silver. And you damn weak preachers that tell folks to buy silver and gold, you're a damn dog of a liar. They're not going to be able to buy the truth. They're not going to be able to buy the truth. See, they can't buy the truth today. It's more than just buying bread, Yisrael. Hell, are we that stupid? We are a damn ignorant people. Because we have not known how to honor true messengers. Did they honor Yahshua? Hell, nobody walked with him when he went to the stake. Just those myriad, myriad, those that represent a, one represent the purity of the body, of the birth, of the, uh, of the place of Yahshua. The other Miriam represent a vow, despicable thing that we would be. It all has representation. Where were those that he called and elected? They went about doing their own business. Where's the one that said, I won't deny you? And he was out trying to make some money. This is more than buying a damn loaf of bread. It is more than buying some damn fish. You will not be able to buy the truth. You will not be able to buy understanding. Your mind will be so damn confused. You're going to cast all your money. How do I get this knowledge? How do I alleviate the pains of my mind? Bill Gates say, all oh, this damn money. I'm a billionaire. And it doesn't do a damn thing for me. We are stupid damn people. Our minds are damn. It's cut off from you. It's cut off from truth. It doesn't admire truth. How do you know this man? Because I am a simple messenger. You must always go back to the beginning. When Yosef was there in Mishraim, Potiphar's house, there was a famine, wasn't it? Yah said, there's going to be a famine. A famine. It's going to be desolate. There's going to be dust in the earth. It's not going to be a famine for eating a bread. It's not going to be a famine. You're trying to buy bread, believe me. You're going to try to buy truth. They go to the suit says they give millions, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and their hearts are still empty, and their minds. You're dealing with the real deal here. You understand? Hallelujah. He said that we were famine in the land. And so in the days of famine, 70 of them went into Mishraim, and they came out rich. Did not Yah supply for them? Because of the messenger's mouth, did not they have bread in plenty? He's going to feed Yisra'ya. He's going to cause us to fly away into the wilderness, that our minds are not, we, come on, into the wilderness. We're not going to get it by defending ourselves with some damn pistol. I'm here to defend truth. I'm here to defend this book. I'm here to defend it against the mother of holotry and abomination, the, the pig ghoul. To tell me that a damn man or can lay with another man and marry one. That's a damn lie. There's only one tour of marriage, a man and a woman. That's it. Well, what about having more? I will show you what happens when you think you can have more, right? Damn dirty bestiality today. He said, uh, you don't lay with the woman. Uh, you don't lay with the beast. Uh, he said, to defile yourself therewith. Uh, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down uh, there too. Uh, it is confusion. When a woman lay down with a beast, she's a damn twisted-minded woman. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We're twisted. Where there's envy and strife, there's confusion in every kind of evil work. They're not going to be able to buy truth, Yisrael. They're going to cast their riches into the street. He's commanded us to buy truth. Now buy this from me. Don't, come on, buy it from me. Buy this of my voice, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Yah says, uh, defile not yourself in any of these things. Don't lay with another man. Don't look at another man to lust at him. Don't look at a woman to lay with her. Don't look at another woman to lust for her. Don't look at a beast that you want to see what it feels like. That's been done today. I don't care if it's on Nickelodeon and Nickelodeon, whatever the damn channel is. Uh, these creative movies that are created by these damn twisted faggots. Uh, I don't care if it's Bernie and Ernie. These are vile, twisted, faggot men. Uh, and most of these producers and these directors uh, and these writers, they are vile, they're faggot. Uh, and in their subtle ways, uh, they program us through subtle words, uh, through subtle words, through subtle words, through subtle words. Uh, I was speaking to my Israel last night as we lied in bed. Uh, 
I say I was telling her about this incident where the FBI as they caught this man that was money laundering money and they said that he was prominent I say isn't that amazing that this is what they kept repeating a prominent man a prominent man a prominent man he was a damn dog he was a murderer Say, kill my wife, kill the children, kill them in front of the children, they're young, they'll get over. That's what this bastard did. You tell me that's a man? Talk to me, Israel. I say, I said to my Israel, but they kept using the words prominent. And that's how our minds are programmed and shaped by control. Oh, well, he's prominent. You know where well, I don't agree with him, but he's still, you know, he's well known. I don't give a damn how known he is. Hallelujah. How Shaltan is known too, isn't he? And he's prominent in the rule of the minds of many. He says, for in all these things, the goem are defiled. He said, this is what defile a nation. What? When you lie with womankind or mankind like you do womankind. When you lay down with a woman, when you shahab with a beast. You can go on that damn thing they call YouTube. I don't like this stuff, honestly. You go on that damn thing, YouTube. I will not type it in. Now, don't do it from here. We will find out. I'm telling you that. You can go on that damn thing and see women having sex with dogs. You can go on there and see them having sex with horses. I'm not lying to you. It's there. Some of the most vilest and despicable. And these damn mammies and these two dollar whiskey drinking nothing dog. Men call themselves husbands and daddies. They give their sons and daughters free range of that damn thing. And they wonder why the little boy is walking like a faggot, acting like a faggot, because he's seen some of the most despicable, despicable, damnable things. And you wonder why the young boy doesn't respect his mammy, doesn't respect any woman at all, because there's nothing on that damn thing that commands them to do that, Yisrael. You wonder why the daughter is sneaking like a little whore. She's doing every kind of little thing. Is she presenting to you? She's all right. Oh, I can get this over, mama. You ever said that in your days? You ever said you can get over? On daddy, get over on mama. Don't sit there like a damn hypocrite. It is much more vile today uh, than the day. Oh, they didn't say that in your days. You're too old. Uh, I can, all right, then. Uh, that's all the witness I need. I don't give a damn what you say. Uh. Oh, daddy won't believe that it's me. Because daddy loves to grin and skin with me and laugh like a damn uh, chipmunk. And then it breaks daddy's damn foolish heart. You're not going to break y'all's heart. There are some that are meant for perdition. They killed the dirty bastard. That's all right. It's not what they say. It's what they do. Moving quickly. Hallelujah. Yah says, because of this, the nations are defiled. He said, I cast out before. I get them out of your way because I don't want you defiled. In verse 25, and the land is defiled, therefore. He said, and the land, the erach, it is tome. Therefore, Yah says, I do, I visit, I punish them bastards. He said, I point over them. I look after them. I let my evil look over those individuals. He said, the iniquity, the ovon. He said, what you are spewing or dis." Gorging out of you. The land is full of iniquity. Ovo. Isn't this land spewing out iniquity? Ovo. Filth. The television, the radios, and everything. The internet. That internet is a vile, damnable entrapment of wickedness. He says, therefore I will visit the iniquity thereof upon it. So if Yah visit Hippocard, he brings back the iniquity upon a land. Yes, right, we better get under the wings of Yahshua. We about to hide ourselves in the pavilion of Yah until this indignation be passed over. We about to hide our minds in the mind of Yahshua because if you don't, Yah's going to destroy that pigula, that wicked mind of a cesspool of every kind of wicked thing because it is the mark of one of the most detestable things, the behemoth, the beast conscience. Yah says, I will therefore, he said, I will visit the iniquity, therefore upon it. He said, and the land shall go, it shall puke, it shall vomit out her inhabitants. This land is puking up its children. They're sitting their sons and daughters to war. They're coming back, minds dislodged and destroyed. They're puking up their babies. They're giving them to drugs and every kind of damn filthy thing. 
They raise up the rappers, the street cree, the thugs and all of that uh, and promote that to your children. They're banging and hanging. Uh, and you set your, child's, uh, your children and your daughters before that, Yisra'ya. They raise up these vile individuals uh, that love to talk about banging and killing and destroying and calling you daughters. Uh, every kind of name it is, is uh, that one can be named to defy your beauty, to defy your dress. Uh, and you listen to that damn filthy mess you filthy Jezebel you're not even a slut of a Jezebel you allow that in your home you filthy slut your damn dog that's why they're calling your dog and you shake your ass on that I will man I hope I got somebody to get mad at me somebody write me and say I'm mad at you mind please please do that I won't be offended I don't get offended like that I'm just telling you I'm not offended I will write you back and say thank you just write and say, I'm mad. Hallelujah. Believe me, we get mad in here. I've watched it over the years. Why do you think it's dwindled to this? And some of us are just holding on to the, by the thread. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm not going to finish this today, but... I'll get back. This is all right by me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got some messages. I may not preach them. I give them to the brothers. Preach it. I'm not telling you how to preach it, but preach it. It's truth. It's viable. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Yah says this. You shall. This is what. This is the mark of the tav of Yah. This is Yah's tav. He said, you shall, you shall shema, you shall guard, you shall observe. That's what keep is. You shall shema, you shall guard, you shall preserve. You shall, you shall take heed to, you shall keep. Yah says, my statutes. You shall keep what I prescribe unto you. He said, you shall keep my mishpatim, my judgment. He says, and shall not commit any of these to a boss, any of these vile things. You don't lay with a woman like you do with man. You don't lay with a woman like you do with mankind, woman. You don't lay with mankind like you do with a woman, man. You don't lay with the beast, woman. You don't lay with the beast, man. You don't have no threesomes, no foursome. You don't do that, man. You don't do that, woman. You don't sell your babies to be a prostitute. You don't bring the spirit of horror into the land that your daughters are given over to prostitution. Their minds are given over to every kind of unclean thing. You don't do that. I'm telling you, you're Ema and you're Avat, you're Zachin. You could have been in trouble with you. You keep walk, walking in your damn moody ways and just being moody and selfish as a damn pig. I'm not taking it back. Because if that identifies you, that's what you are. You're a damn pig. You're an abominable, damn filthy mass of funky flesh. Come on, man. Just keep walking in your damn wickedness, your proudness of your vile nature. And God has caused you to experience life in abundance. And you got another day and you 65, 75, and you sit in your damn closed little temple of darkness. You damn dirty bastard. You don't open your heart to Yisrael. Damn you, man. I don't give a damn who you are. You go to your little conclave, yeah. you sit back and don't do a damn thing. Yeah. It is light. Yeah. If the light is in you in the daytime, uh, so you work until your eyes become dim, man. Yeah. You sit around on your lazy ass. Yeah. Yeah. You say you love you, you don't give a damn. Yeah. Yeah. We got a job to do. It's a mad Yisra'ya. You're not going to save the damn world. We save ourselves. Who are ourselves? We're Ika. We are one. Is we not? Are we not? Then we save Yisra'ya. We save one another, Yisra'ya. And my brother, Ach, keep a year. I watch over my Ach. I observe my Ach. I observe his house. I watch over his house. Sure. We've twisted things because we don't know a damn thing. And our minds have been captivated by this dirty whore that spew all this pigul, this filth, this idolatry, so we don't know anything. And so Yah raises up simple messengers that cause us to begin to redeem the time. We got to ponder what they say and consider and allow it to reside in our rush and govern us, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
He said, you must keep my statutes in verse chapter 26, uh, my judgment. Uh, he said, and you shall not commit any of these abomin abominations, these to Abraham. He said, neither any of your own of your own nation, nor any strangers that come among you. He said, any of those that uh, are with you as Yisrael, it, yeah, any of those that journey among you or sojourners. Uh, he said, you don't even teach them to do things that are wicked. You don't show them. It's more than our talk to those that come visit us. It's our actions and our lives when they're gone. How we live among each other, Yisrael. Yeah? We full of damn pretense. Show them that we are this and that. And then we live among Yisrael yeah, like damn pigs. We consider them. We don't even consider each other. You're damn, you're damn phony. That's the way we are as a nation. It is much more personified outside of a place where at least we can see our actions clearly. We don't want that. Because we're allowing this, we allow the seed of some of the most secretive, confused things to penetrate our minds. And they lay their eggs and then the babies that come out, our thoughts are thoughts of some of the most virulent, reprehensible acts against Yah. Because what we do unto one another, Yahshua said, what you do unto your ach, your hope, you do the same unto me. So if I dishonor my ach here, dishonor him. And now that doesn't mean that we, we don't correct one another. You see your neighbor sinning, you reprove your neighbor. And if he's a true neighbor, he will love you. If your ach or your brother have sinned against you, you go tell him his sin. And if he repents of your hope, then you've gained a brother or sister. Let someone tell us our damn sins today. We, ride, we raise up like a damn beast. We blow up like a damn toadfish. We get fat in our jaws. We get fat in our damn actions and our attitudes. Our eyes begin to run and our heads get ashy. They get red as a damn beat. We're wicked as hell. We're supposed to, we're supposed to help keep each other. Are you parents, mothers, and fathers? Are you going to help keep your sons and your daughters? Are you going to tell them the right thing? Did he tell you to love your daughter more than you love Yisrael? Did he tell you to love your husband or your wife more? This damn stupid nation. I've always hated that when I saw that in a minute. I, I've seen men, they didn't give a damn about the other children, but they, get, they cared about every other child. They didn't invite no damn body into their house with their sons. It's the damn truth I've seen it. I see mothers don't give a damn about anybody else's child. I watched that with my, my even my dad. They didn't give a damn. They said they loved their mother, their sister, but they didn't give a damn. That will go down. Oh, that I'm glad I knock on wood. My children's ain't that way. You damn crazy woman. I'm not taking anything back. Oh, I don't try to, I don't try to brush over my, my heritage. Y'all had to bring me through that. That I could appreciate Yahshua. As they were saying, look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, look where Yah brought he brought me from, he brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. He brought me. He brought me. And I'm not going to covet that. I speak that as a warning to all Yisrael. The causing out of this dirty horse, she bringing bestiality to the forefront. She bringing faggotism and butch bulldoggerism. She got faggots on television. Isn't that amazing, Yisrael? And I say it without any repentance. You got all these programs on television that are so damn folly. I don't know what's on television. But I can see as I read the papers, I see really know what they call men and women truly of the diaspora that are commentaries and that are speaking or a face that represent a multiplicity of a nation. You don't see that. They got all these damn faggots. They dress these faggots like dogs. They present them to your children. They dress, dress them. These, what's that faggot's name? I don't know that. But anyway, they got all these faggots. They twist it around like women. And they're presenting this to your sons and your daughters. And your sons and daughters thinking that's right. And you'll start see them walking like faggots. That is the truth. If you don't believe me, try it. Don't try that, though. Put them before me and let them watch me, all right? Find them. You gone to hell, devil! 
Come on. You see the little boys twisting. You see the little girls acting like they're boys. You honor that more than you honor young. You will bow down before it and pray before it and offer before it. You offer your wife up for it. You won't spend no time with your wife. You offer your husband up for it. You'd rather not have a husband and sit down in front of that and feed the gods or bring the offerings in front of that feed your damn fat, greedy belly woman. You don't want your wife, man. You feed your wicked damn belly in front of that all day. Talk to me. Yeah. It is the damn truth. Yeah. You build shrines in your own house. Your children got their own little avenues. And that's the truth. Yeah. I'm not taking anything back, Yisraya. We're living in one of the most violent of corrupt times. You're raised up to not be the prophet. I'm not a prophet. You're not a prophet. Raise up the mighty messengers, you are. The strong young men that are powerful. Not these little effeminate faggot men that got mama's spirit in them. It's about a man with the spirit of a man. There's a breath of the power of Yoshua HaMashiach. Having a wife that's telling you what's clean and what's unclean. Damn that! If he's a messenger, he knows. He takes control, he takes over the house. I'd rather be, listen, I say it this way. I'm, I, I want to give you a parable. I'd rather be, and honestly, a man that doesn't even know Yah, and my house is in control, even though it's ignorant. By the rule of my spirit, than to say I know Yah, and to have an effeminate spirit. That the gender, the protocol of my house is based upon a weaker element than me. No way in hell. Not me. Not me. Not me. I will go to hell that way. I don't want to go to no heaven being that way, weak and effeminate. I'd rather go to hell. You understand? So I'm saying that to show you the paradigm that I'm going to stand for Yah. And my house is going to be ruled by the Ruach of Yah. What the Ruach, the living testimony of Yahshua. That's what the Ruach does. The Ruach always brings up, it brings nothing but, it doesn't speak of it, it speaks of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Am I making sense the Ruach? Hallelujah. Look quickly in verse 27. Yah says, for all of these, not some, for all of these pigul, these abominations, or these uh, shit kuts, you know, it's one thing about, it's one thing. I know that word because I've read, it's more than one way to express abomination to Eba, shit, kutz, just like, see, we use the word, if we say the word S-H-I-T, the little minds are not aware, but shit. See, it's spelled the same way, shit, kut. See, the ang language of the English, it is nothing but a language of robbery. So when we shit, is it despicable? Will you play with that? Will you go in the toilet and grab that and make a cake? Get it all in your nails and smear it on your face? It is a shit chutz. Oh, shit chutz. Shit chutz. How do you know that? Because I take time. And I look at things thoroughly. And I research things all the time. Oh, when I come in there, you're pretending. Okay, let it be. I'm pretending that. I look at things all the time. My mind never rests. I got up this morning, I spent 20 minutes in this, what I'm teaching you, not even that. I put together a profound message this morning. That's the truth. I don't know if I ever teach it, but I know what it's about. I don't know the value of it. That's what I spent time this morning putting together another message. And looking at a question that one asked me out of the book of Yesha. I got that, Akiyako. I'll explain that to you in the most profound way, all right? I will explain it. Explain it to you. So that's what I spent time on. Hallelujah. He says, For all these abominations have the men of the land done. You tell me they have lay with men with men? Are they doing that in this nation? Are they trying to impress that upon your mind, your rush? Have they done this in this nation? Women with women. And women with beasts and men with beasts. They're not trying to impress that to program your mind to make that acceptable. They say about 70% of this nation says it's all right for man to be a fag. It's all right for man to do what they want to do. Well, if that's the case, uh, then these damn pedophiles, if they want children, why not let them do that? If a man wants to have his own little daughter, why not let him do that? There are men that take their own daughters, Yisra'ya. 
If you all recall when that movie came out, Precious, I've never seen it. Don't want to see it. With this overly weight woman that they serenaded her, gave her prominency in the, in the screen. Everybody fell in love and said, she's so pretty. She wasn't pretty. She looked a mess. With her arms hanging out like a piece of pig meat. That's the truth. Don't try to dress it up. She looked like a damn hog. Let's be honest with it. Fat hanging off her arms. She got all cut out dresses on her. She looked a damn mess. And the reason they did that, uh, if you recall, there was this very prominent news reporter, this, this actor. She began to talk about her. Her daddy from a young girl he had sex with her. And she was nearly 40 years old. He was still having sex with her. One of the most prominent men in Hollywood. I'll go back and get the information. So what they did, they did that to delude the mind of the people. So they brought out this image of this big fat black woman. That her daddy was a damn big pig. And her mama, and her mama was a pig. And this whore, this woman was a very prominent starlight, starlight in Hollywood. Her daddy was, was having affairs with her ever since she was a young girl. And she become immune to it. She liked that. And they had her on every program Oprah and all, you know, everything that everyone experienced, Oprah has experienced it. Everything that everyone experienced, Oprah has experienced it. That's why they made the fat Jezebel rich. She's a stupid bimbo of a slut. I don't take that back. Everything that everyone goes through, Oprah has experienced that. Oprah had a baby in my tube. Oh, girl. You know, I've never told anyone, but I had a baby in my tube as well. I know the experience. Oprah, I had an affair with a woman. I'm a woman. She's not going to tell you she, her and Gail are sleeping together. Oh, Oprah, I had this dream in my past life. That's this experience that I had. Oh, Oprah. Oh, I've never told anyone this. And just by your statement, it has awakened something in me. This is Oprah now. <laughs> I was 32 and I had this experience. It was me on the supernatural. And I found myself in this place and I was like that. Oh, Oprah, <laughs> I died. And I experienced death. I come back to tell people. <laughs> and Oprah, oh. <laughs> In my days, I was 26. I couldn't tell anyone this, but that's why I had you on today, because I wanted to. I had the experience with that. And, and I saw this beautiful crystal thing up. <laughs> that's why the whore is a billionaire. Y'all don't have to buy it. We are stupid people. Everything someone experienced, Oprah has already experienced it. So they put this clown before the people, and people buy her. They won't buy truth, though. Yisraya, you don't need a 50 cal. You need truth in your bosom. They're going to throw their money and their silver and gold into the street. You're not going to be able to buy or sell. You're not going to be able to get rid of that garment. you simla. So now buy the truth from who? From the bosom of Yah and Yeshua. Hallelujah. If it take me two years to finish this, I'm going to finish it. And this can't be done in a few weeks, in a few months. Hallelujah. We must understand all the ramifications. She's the mother of abomination, is she not? If she's not the mother of hollow tree of zana and abomination, pigula, pigul, is she not? And this is some of her abomination. Isn't this in the minds of the people? Does this not rule in the hearts of many today? That's why that man writes me from Tennessee because uh, he gets upset when I, when I talk about the faggot dogs. That's why he insults me and assaults him, uh, me. If he's not a faggot, this should not be insulting or insulting unto him. This should not be an assault upon him. I bring an assault upon all the dogs of hell. I bring an assault upon all those that sleep with, uh, sleep with a woman that sleep with a woman like mankind. I bring the sword of all the pigs of hell that a man sleep with a man like mankind. I bring the sword of that abomination upon all these beasts of the darkness of the birth of hell uh, that, that, that do these vile things. Lord said, for that reason, I've driven them out before you. I don't want you to learn their damn dirty ways. 
And we give our minds out to one of the most vilest and most reprehensible thing. It controls our mind. It programs. It's all right to be a faggot. No, it's not. It's all right for your little boy to act like a little girl. No, he acts like a boy. Daddy teaches the boy to act like a boy. See, daddy teaches him his place, his authority, his beauty as a man. No woman can. That's why our prisons are filled with young boys. That's why they're banging. See, daddy will. He may not, but he will teach him how to throw hands. Hmm. He will teach him that. I got my little boy back there teaching some stuff. I said, I won't teach you too much. He likes that. This. <clears throat> oh, I know what I'm doing. Believe me. I know what I'm doing. So I don't teach him too much. He said, so uh, we got this little thing. We go, us, give me your belt. Oh. So someone behind me said, give me your belt. Not my money. He doesn't have money that I don't. So give me your belt. And so you have to know how to make the right moves, whatever way, whichever hand. So I don't teach him too much because I don't want him to get too aggressive. So man teach a man the art of defense. You understand? Look at him, see? He's getting fruity back there. He teaches him the art of defense. And so when he's in the home, he, he understands his place as a young man. So a woman teach him the, the femininity, the femininity of a woman. He sees her weaknesses and her, her strength. But daddy re-fortifies re him with the strength of a man. He sees daddy come home and say, hey, baby, grab it. Oh, let me pick you up. And he looks at that. <laughs> That's what he does. He sees daddy as the defense of the house. He watches mama when she says, okay, my husband will be home. And then he watched daddy come home and say, what's the problem, man? Oh, hold, no, whoa, 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 hold on, man, oh, whoa. Don't come to my house. This, oh, whoa, man, you don't do that. Go ahead, man, go ahead. That's what he sees. When he sees that, he understands the strength and the beauty of a man. So what he sees today, the weakness of a woman, so that's why he goes. It wasn't heard of in my days. We laid it out. So we learned how to do Negro Roddy. That's my defense mechanism. I call it Negro Roddy. It works too. And it's bad to the bone. Believe me. Negro Roddy. No karate. Negro Roddy. You hear that? Hallelujah. Can't go around this Torah, can you? Again, verse 27 of Weyira. I got four pages of scripture. I'm not going to finish, but I'll continue from here next week. Because I want to show you what has come out of this woman's breath, her kingdom power, her mind objective to train to rule us. He says in verse 27, For all these abominations have the men of the land donned, which were before you, and the land is told me, the land of America is defiled. It is unclean. It is vile. It said that the land, that the land may spew or spit you not out. When you defile it, as it spit out the goem that were before you. Yah says, this has been done so the land will not puke you up. A cool, disgorge you as a nation before you. Uh, because I don't want you to learn their ways and do what they do. Verse 29. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, these pigul to eba, or these, uh, or these shithuts, he says, even the nephesh, the soul, the life, the breath, the nephesh that commit them uh, shall be cut off, shall be destroyed, uh, exterminated, cut off. Is, are they committing that in this land? That man shall be cut off from Yah. The nephesh, we say soul, but the nephesh uh, is the fullness of the life of man. It is that. No, it's not just something invisible. It is the entirety. It is the culmination of a man, the breath of the life in him. Uh, Yah says it shall be cut off, shall be destroyed, uh, exterminated, cut off, uh, annihilated. Even uh, the nephesh that commit them shall be cut off. From among their people. Then he commands us, therefore, you shall shana, you shall keep my mishmerech, my ordinance, my prescribed mythology, my mishmerech. You shall guard it, you shall allow it to be guarded. Where, where are things guarded in our minds? Is it not? 
in your mind is where you guard all things. You're corrupt and you guard it in your mind. So when one attacks it, don't you set up a defense? When one attacks it, when y'all attacks your mind and your ways, don't you set up a defense? When he attacks your abomination, your corrupt and your filth, you set up a defense, don't you? And that's what we do, Yisra'ya. We must stop. We must stop, Yisra'ya. It's time that we grow up. We that are the elders, we must ingrain something in our young ones. It is more than our damn corrupt ways. We must install, we must input, we must furnish the wherewithal and the tools, the mind, to our little ones to strive to please Yah. And they're going to see that by your actions, your will, and your works, the works of your hands, the works of your heart. That's right, my aunt. They're going to see that. We can't teach them things that are dysfunctional and distorted. Yah says, therefore shall you keep my ordinance, my mishriya. That you commit not any one of these abominable customs. He called them all customs. That you commit not any of these pekbul. Uh, these shitkuts, vile, filthy, idolatrous, unclean things, which were committed before you, that you defile, defile yourself to uh, defile yourself to me with this filthy rag therewith. He says, "For I am Yah, your Abba." He says, "I'm the mighty one. I'm the great one. Don't defile yourself that way, Yisraya. I'm the one that governs you." I'm the one that caused the tav, the tav, not the oath, but the tav, the mark whereby you know that you shall miss the judgment. It is the mark of seal. That's what the ruach is. The Holy Ghost is the mark of damnation, death, and hell. The ruach hachodesh is the mark of Yah to seal us, that we are unequivocally exempt from His hand, His wrath, and His judgment. When He comes to the light, He looks for the tav. When the death Melech came to the land of Misraim, he looked for the dawn. When the messengers of death of Yah come to the land, they look for the, for the testimony, the Eddah, the Eddah, the testimony of Yahshua. That's what they look for. And you will tell by the, by the Mesach, the markings of one's mind. You can tell by your frowns and the way you furrow your brows and all of that. You can tell a lot about a man. Chirac says you can tell the street, the beauty. You can tell a lot about a man between his brows. That's all you need to look to. Our parents have the ability to do that. What's wrong with you, boy? Ain't that wrong, mama? No, no, boy. I know what's wrong. Don't do lie. Don't, don't you use the lies in me, boy. You just better go out of here, boy. Because I know what's wrong with you, boy. And you didn't want to lie to them. It's something you didn't want to do. Best to tell the truth. You tell the truth, it makes you free. Even you get free from her wrath. You's about to go on out of the boys, I was, I was going to whip the fire as you say, you, you go out of here. I say, playing. You knew better. You got happy behind that because you escaped the wrath. And all of a sudden, you went outside the whole, you had a top, the whole expression was changed. You, ah, ready to go now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to read a few more things, Yisraya. I, I got to cover some things before I close. Zakhang Rabbi Yahweh said, just bear with me, whether you bear or not. But hear me today, all right? Please do that. I want you to hear this. Hallelujah. Yah speaks to us in the book of Dibarim. We should not be afraid of this vile nature of the spirit because it is pigul. It is filthy. Yah says he's going to drive them out as he has always done for Yisrael. It is the living Ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach that drives these things out of our mind. Our attitude and our actions, this mark of this behema, this behema, this beastly nature, that you don't give a damn about Yah above all. And when you don't love Yah with all your heart, soul, or your heart, nefesh, mind, your nefesh, your being, then you can't love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that's just the truth. If you're rude and nasty to you, you'll be rude and nasty to me. That's just the fact of the matter. If you have a dispersing, dis, disperse, despising attitude toward you, you're going to despise me. And that's the truth. When you find others despising others, they despise themselves. That's the truth. Okay, what if this one is lowly among you? Then esteem that one above you. 
Although they may not have your strength or the characteristics of your strength, you exchange them. You lift them up. You don't belittle. You don't. Come on, Yisra'ya. There are men that have done me so wrong, I don't even mention their names. I don't even talk about them. You all don't know a third of the things that I go through every time. I don't say anything. Well, are you troubled? No, not at all. I don't lose no sleep. I just keep going on. That's the truth. I don't say anything. I really don't. I don't put the burden on no one. I don't say anything even to him. Even to you. I don't. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. That is the truth. But that doesn't mean I will not give credence unto their wickedness. Let it be. I'm all right with that. Well, y'all says I'm going to drive them out because I'm going to promote my kingdom power in your mind, Yisra'ya. He's going to pr promote that. Hallelujah. It says in the book of Debarim, Deuteronomy 7.25, y'all talks about the graven images of their gods, of their beings, of their religious structure. We must understand the power of Debarim 7.25. It is all based upon the principle of their religion. And in my days as a young man coming up in uh, the simplicity of ignorance of what I thought was truth, uh, we were taught even a dictionary defined things 30 years ago, 33 years plus ago. Uh, religion was the worship of God or gods. So Yah says we must tear down the images uh, in our minds of their gods. He said you must burn them with the ish of the fire. You shall not desire, you shall not harm out, you shall not covet their gods. You should not cover their activity. You should not delight in the gods of the silver and the gold that is on them. And that's what we do today. We look at the, what we call the refined things of life. Their cars and their homes and the gold colored cars and the interior leather. And we just take crazy delight in that. The fashions and all of that. The bath of I will never stop saying that. Your design clothes that are beautiful. They put you on things that make you look damn silly as hell. It is not of the Kodash nature of Almighty Yah. What hell, you have time to do it. You have time to design clothes, design your, your, our ish clothing, and make their clothing. You have time to do it. A little folding of hand, a little sleep, a little slumber. You, be, you, you come to poverty. You don't want to do that. So we let the wicked do that for us. It should not be, Yisrael. Have you got more time than you got time? He said, no, take it. He said, no, take it. Unless you be snared therein. Yah said, their ways and their deeds are an abomination. Where do all abominations come from? Did I not read in Gilead now where they come from? Is she not the mother of Toeba? Her gods. Jesus Christ is an image of this illicit whore. Doesn't a whore draw? She's not out to illicit man or a man. She's not out for to draw man into a bosom. Is not that what this damnable thing we call Christianity has done? It has gone forth in the four corners of the earth and drew men into this act of whoredom, into our houses of ill repute. Of every kind of unclean, foul action there is. Has she not done that? Yes. You got Baptist, you got Methodist, you got Pentecostal, you got Apostolic. You got the husband that's an Apostolic and the wife that's a holiness. And they both got their own separate whorehouses. She's a Baptist, he's a Methodist. I was thinking this morning, my cousin had passed. She and her husband, he went to Mayfield Baptist. And she went to Nazareth Baptist. They never went to the whole house together. Mama going to Beulah Baptist whole house and daddy going to First Zion Methodist whole house. You wonder why the damn sons are twisted and effeminate as faggots? You wonder why the young women don't have no sense of the beauty of a wife? It's more than straddling a bed woman and laying on your back. That's not a wife. That's the last resort to a wife, to a husband. The most prominent result is, is, is the mind and the beauty of that. And the charm of obedience. Hell, that's the last result. Is that what creates that environment to make the other actions more profound? If you're a damn beast, it means nothing. You just, you operate in an action and a mode to, to satisfy just one proudness. 
And it should be to satisfy the inward man. Well, women think, I got some honey. You don't have a damn thing that no other woman has. I don't give a damn if she's that big. She got the same thing. And if you think you got something that is that grand, you are a damn fool. I'm not, no, no, if these faggot dogs can put damn beasts on television, uh, I'm not going to dismantle or destroy the beauty of, of, of the, or the corporation or the institution of marriage that y'all created. Uh, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to take from that. Uh, that's a part of it, but it's not the most important factor. Yosef did not touch Mary him. He waited until. So it cannot be the most important thing. It wasn't the most important thing. It was the stimulation of her beauty that he could from her mind. That's what stimulates a man. A damn boy is a beast. You want some little billies, they can't do anything. But they're on the billies, they're on the little natties, they're on everything. It's the billy that knows what the action is. And so we jump on everything. That's what a boy does, but a man doesn't. A man is particular. He wants to understand the beauty of the mind. He's ah, beautiful. Then the more you understand the beauty of the mind, he regards that with a greater honor. And then when there is a, when there's a consummation of their minds meeting, uh, it is not just an aggressive act of sweating uh, like a pig. Uh, it is something that is, it is, it is memorable, beyond memorable. It is something of a zikron. It is stored in her mind and she remembers something. It is mind that he never forgets. That's a fact. It's not all this folly that we think what we have been taught uh, is the intimacy of love. It's not that. That's what this dirty whore has taught. That's why these faggot dogs are never satisfied. They put everything up in them. They put everything. They put bottles. Uh, they put sticks and they're still not satisfied. They put the billboards and everything. The women do every kind of damn despicable thing it is. They're still not satisfied. Uh, you gave an action to a man and a woman once. Once in that romantic encounter. One time. That's all it takes. Uh, Man just have not learned the way of y'all. Yeah. One time. Once. And the beauty is summated or culminated in that one event. Because the man is prepared the body. That's it. He's coming into us one time, Joshua. When he comes, he's coming for bread. That's it. Yeah. And we have learned the filth of the world and we think that it is the proper and the right way, Yisraya. It is not so. Then we began to, husband and wives are going into all kinds of extreme things today. Filthy and nasty and vile and polluted. Corrupt. When the hell you come up with that woman? Even the whores don't do that. The dirty sluts on the street don't do that. The whores say, no, I'm not going to do that. That's a fact. That's a fact. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. I'm telling us the truth. He gave a proper way for a man and a woman. And don't sit here all pious like that. It's No, I want them to know. See, they don't understand what I'm saying, but the spirit of that truth will penetrate their heart. And they will know, and they will understand. Sure they will. By and by, they'll understand, Yisra'ya. It's filthy, it's not filthy. What the world is doing is filthy. You don't have to explain to children what mom and daddy are for. They see in the intimacy, in the love, in their caressing, their touch, their talking. Hell, he'd rather lay there all day and watch television. She on the other side, they never talk. Let me move on, hallelujah. She's on the damn computer all day and he got his computer. Come on, that's not Yah. He said that you should not desire their gods or anything because an abomination of Yah. Verse 66. He said, neither shall you bring an abomination. Do you hear that? I want us to mark that because I, I'm not finished here today. He says, in Dibarim 7.26. He said, neither shall you bring an abomination to a bar, a big bull, that is filthy, vile. He said, into your house, lest you be a cherim, lest you be a cursed thing. Now, you all hear that. I want you to hear that. You don't bring that which is abominable into your house. Is this our spiritual house here? This is our spiritual storehouse right here, isn't it? Yes, our ayin. Our ayin. Our ayin. Our eyes. Our brain is our eyes. Our brain is our eyes, our eye to determine spiritually and mentally. Our perception is refined. He said, you don't bring that into your bed. You don't bring that which is an abomination uh, into your bed unless, unless you become a, uh, a harem, a cursed thing. A thing, a harem is a thing that is so cursed, kala, that it, uh, it, it is deserving of, of early destruction, not just to destroy. There are things that Yah, when he went down to Sodom and Gomorrah, he utterly destroyed it, didn't it? 
They did not, uh, he utterly destroyed uh, uh, Lot's wife. She became a pill of salt. They did not, uh, and she remained there until that day, until the day of judgment. Oh, you don't see it with the natural eyes. Uh, just like the mark of the beast, men are not going to see it with their natural eyes. Uh, they're not going to say, put your hand on here for a chip. That's dumb as hell. That's dumb as hell. How does the man in the backwood waters of the poorest of nations uh, put his hands under some kind of damn scam where they don't even have electricity? This is a damn dumb generation. It is a damn generation. I use the word damn because their minds uh, are intimate with Yah. Intimate. It is a hatred toward Yah. They cannot perceive the things of Yah. It doesn't make damn sense, Yisrael. You tell me those at the free market, they're going to have a damn machine. You got to put that. That's stupid as hell. You're not going to be able to buy it. So you're going to be able to buy it truth and I won't be able to sell this to you you wouldn't buy your say go to hell David not that way go to hell David we speak that way anyway don't we I don't want to hear that no somebody going to tell me nothing you might as well get real with it and we see what's formatting in our minds we got to understand this thing yesterday we see the works of the constitution of our mind y'all's given us the constitution here you don't lay with the beast. You don't lay with the woman if you're, oh, if you're a woman. You don't lay with the man if you're a man. This bestiality, they promote it everywhere. Promote it on your job. Lesbian, gay, bi, what is, bi, transsexual. They're all damn beasts. If you're a lesbian, you're a damn dirty beast. You're a pig. You're a faggot, you're a pig. You're a transvestite, you're a damn double dirty pig. If you're anything but a man, you're a pig. If you're anything but a woman, you're a damn dirty, twisted, demented pig. You were not born that way. And they got the saying now, they want to tie that in with what they call the civil rights of the people of the diasporas. Well, they had no control over what, uh, how they were born. Well, hell, you got people that were born in the diasporas uh, that are blacker than you and me. And hell, they despise what they call black skin. How was that done? Were they born that way or were they shaped that way? Hell, they were shaped that way. They were shaped that way. You got people that are blacker than such. And they despise what they call, they hate what they call blackness. They hate black people. You got white women that are Caucasian, they despise white men. They don't want a white man. Now white men that will not buy a white woman. And same way with other ethnic. Other colors of the fragment, other color of the skin of people. And that's just the truth. That's a different teaching. I want to stay here, right? And so they were not born a damn faggot. Yah says, he says, you shall be a harem thing like it, but you shall be utterly detested. You shall be ta'ab. You shall be hated by Yah. You shall hate those things. And you shall utterly abhor it. For it is a kala, it is a cursed thing. It is vile. Those things that do not progenerate in our minds to bless Yah, it is a cursed thing. So you don't let the abominable thing into your bed, your house. We are a spiritual storehouse, the incubator of the truth of Yah, that produce living substance, life and power and fruit. Is it not? <laughs> That's why we start things in the greenhouse now to produce fruit, don't we? That's why you do it. So it's the fire that is shut up in us that causes the heat of the word that if there is any dross in us or any wicked thing, it draws it out. That's why we must hear the message of truth proclaimed unto us. That it may cut out and clean. This is a two-edged sword of a message. I'm going to teach on, I am going to teach on all of that. You, they will not be able to buy and sell. You will understand it as I go. It's not what we've been taught. These wicked men don't know. They say you can't buy no food, you can't buy no clothes, you can't buy this. Well, we're going to be dressed. How do you know that we're going to have on the garments of the, the Simla of Shadik? Did they come out of Misraim? Did they wear the same garment? They had a manufacturing, they wore the same garment. Their shoes did not hurt their feet. They grew on their feet, they didn't get old. Every time they look, they say, man, I don't want to take these shoes off. You got a pair of shoes, you like them above all shoes? Yeah. You want to wear them with everything? You never had a pair of shoes like that? I have. You think when you put them on, you, you, every day you look at them and say, man, look what has prepared my walk. Ooh, Yahshua Hamashiach. Our feet shod with the preparation of the message of Shalom. In him you move, in him you live, in him you walk, in him you have your being. 
And so when they, they didn't understand, they say, this is, boy, I tell you, look, look at me. You saw, look at this girl. Do you see what I see? Oh, girl, oh, look at my, oh, woo, my, 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 ah. He just gets sweet and sweet every day. The more we walk in him in the midst of all these turbulent trials, he gets sweet every day. Are you having on the slim left? It's righteous. You say, I'm not changing this. I got a t-shirt I've had uh, 25 years. Over 25 years, 30 years. I'm not lying to you. And I finally reduced it to a rag that I shine shoes with. Still got it. Still got it. I like that t-shirt. I like the way it fitted on me. I just, I just like it. I did. I'll tell you what I said. I bought it 30 years ago. It says on the t-shirt, it got this brown circle. And it says, the black nation. That's what it said. The black nation, unified. I've always liked that shirt. I still got it. And that's what it said. Don't, don't be a hypocrite. All right. Yeah, I bought that 30 years ago. Still got it, okay? All right. Hallelujah. I'm going to read one more event, and I'm going to close from here. And then we're going to get back here next week, all right? All right. We're going to stay the course. I wanted to teach something else today, but I could not. I'll get it on Cafe Imat. I want to again direct our attention to in the book of Dibarim, chapter 12. As Yah warns us of these abominable things, you don't allow things to permeate in your mind, Yisrael. That's why any thought, any imagination, we should be able to cast down every thought, every, every imagination, exalt except against. The Melchu of Yah. What is that? When these things become so prominent in your mind, you talk about them more than you talk about Yah. You greet your Isha and you're talking about things that are foolish and frivolous. You greet your Isha and you're talking about things that are foolish and frivolous. I'm telling you, I'm that way. My Isha, she knows. Am I telling the truth? Huh? It's just the truth. Woman, I don't want to hear. That's the way I am. I said, what did you do about it? Get out of my damn face, woman. You talk to her like that? Yeah, she doesn't come with me anything. That is the truth. And get with you about it now. Hallelujah. Talk to me about yeah. Let me look up there and see you in that book. Okay, I like that. Let me see you studying. I like that. Ask me a question, okay? You ask me a question, I answer it. One day I took her, I said, Let me show you how let me show you how to do things out of the book. I said, I said, I'm gonna take this one scripture right here. And I'm gonna show you 10, 20 messages. And I just taught her some things just that one day. And she got crazy. I said, I put something together. But she said, oh, no, no. I know how to do it now. I see it. I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, this is beautiful. That's where man should teach his house. Hallelujah. You got to teach, man. Can't sit back grinning and playing all damn day. You got to teach, man. I want to close here from the book of Dibarim. Yabrach, you all that have joined us. You that have fallen off, just go back and listen. I know you're not listening, but go back again. My enemies, I'm glad you're here. And by the way, we're not going hungry here. We have plenty of food. We have money. We have money. We have the Hashem of Yah. Oh, we have the Hashem of Yah. We have money because how many, how many uh, cabbages do we have in the greenhouse? About how many old man's of that we About 700, 800? We got about how many cabbages in the greenhouse ready to go? Those trays we started. We got about 800 cabbages there, don't we? We got that many. So we, how about we're about hungry? We got cabbages in the field. At mine, we can butcher goat every day if we wanted to for a month. We can butcher sheep every day for three months. So we won't go hungry. And if we have nothing to eat, we'll get old Yara back from Jamaica there. And we'll go out and pick up some pigweed and some lamb quarters and we eat that. How Yah has blessed these grounds. Yeah. Lamb's quarters. Wild onions. Poke salad. Fish and ponds. Oxymion, pop that water, man. Better mean get on that side. Shimmy in the middle. Come on, Yah, Asadat. Let's drain this bad boy. Catch fish. Pull him out. We're not going out there with no pole, mama. We're going to... <clears throat> we getting out in there with our boots on. 
We got some nets, and we walking them bad boys to the end. You coming up out of here. And then we walked them to the end. We can eat all we want. How many do you want to get? Get through two or three hundred. hundred. That's right. I want to close from this. Listen quickly. Yah warns us about those things that are abominable. Again, I want to reintroduce. She is the mother upon her forehead. Was written her name mystery. Bavar the great, the mother of holotry and pick ghoul. She is the mother of abomination. Isn't she not? And so anything that is mothered, you put it in your bosom and you protect that. Don't, do mothers do that? Even the most unprotective mothers do that. So what thing you allow to reside and to take preeminence in your mind, you mother that, you nurture that, you nourish that, that it will grow and become strong. So these things we cannot allow in our minds to grow, become strong, and overthrow the kingdom power of Almighty Yah, that we don't rely upon the testimony of Yahshua. He says in Devarim 12, 28, he says, I want you to shema, I want you to observe, I want you to uh, be, be observant, I want you to take heed to what I say. He said, I want you to shema, I want you to hear with obedience all these words which I, Yah, command you uh, for what reason? That it may go well uh, with you. Uh, and not only will it go well with you, uh, but also your being, your children um, after you. And he says, for how long? Forever, doesn't he? He says, without season, antiquity, perpetual. Uh, see, we do what Yah says. It will go well with us uh, and with our children. Forever, Yisrael, we do what he says. If we don't do what Yah says, then woe to our children. He says, when you do, when you, what do we do? We asa. We fashion ourselves. That is what the word do is. It's the fashion your mind. It is to create the image to fashion to do, to perform, to operate in that spirit. When we accomplish and attend to when we do that which is tav and yosha, it is upright, it is straightforward. In the days we said, man, just be straight with me. They don't say that today. Man would say, man, I'm straightforward with you, man. That's how we would do it. Straight, man. I'm straight, man. And you say, do that which is your shah upright. In the sight of Yah, your Abba. He said, when Yah, your Abba, shall cut off the goyim, the nations, from before you. Yah is going to bring down the nations. He said, that you are going to possess them. And you will yarash, you will succeed, you're going to dispose, you're going to take possession because that is your inheritance, Yisrael, them. He said, you're going to dwell in the land. He warns us, he said, take heed to who? Your neighbor of yourself. See, that's what we must do. It's one thing about a hen, it always take heed to the little chicks, doesn't it? It's one thing about a mother goat, she take heed to her, that little goat, he. It's one thing about a lamb, a mother lamb, once it birthed that thing, it doesn't, you can't touch it because if you touch it right there, it won't even touch it. It'll go away from it. That's why we can't touch the unclean things of the world. Touch not. Handle not. Taste not. So she doesn't touch it. That's why you don't touch the little ones. You just leave it alone. And she'll go back. She'll take heed to it. He says, take heed to yourself that you do not be snared by following them. There are all kinds of entrapments today to snare our minds, to draw us away from Yah, to take our time away from Torah, to take our time away from the Misra, the ruling of His powerful kingdom, and the Torah of the mark of Yah, our mind, the testimony of Yahshua. Your anger, your disgruntledness, your murmuring, your complaining. That you do not follow them after that they are destroyed from before you. You don't follow the ways of the world, the wicked. That you should not inquire or seek after their gods. We don't seek after their gods. Their religious perspective. We don't hear their voice. Saying, how did these nations serve their God? You ask that for what reason? Even so will you do too. If you try to find out the things that are vile. If you always seeking out information on one another. You will do the same thing, Yisrael. Yeah. If your ark of your hood have sinned, pray for them. Yeah. A friend will cover the sin of, a, of an ahot or ark. One that tells things, they separate the chiefest of friends. That's a fact. They have been wives said to their husband, well, he did this just like we saw with, uh, with uh, uh, Daniel Yah, Potiphar's wife. He wants me. And he had to flee. You're safe. He had to run. And there have been wives to tell the husband when well, he said that he did that and, and, and separated the chief as a friend. 
I'll tell you a story. I'll never forget this. Uh, his wife, she would run her mouth. She was disrespectful because she would disrespect him. But I wouldn't let her do me like that. I said, woman, you shut your mouth. You're not going to talk. No. You may do that with him, but with me, you're not going to do it. I said, you shut your mouth, woman. You're a woman. I said, you're wrong. What you said is wrong. So he comes to my house and said, Brother Robert, I got some bones to pick with you. So I stepped out of the house, 235, 240 pounds. Strong as a natural bull. I was strong then. I was strong. You understand? I was strong then. I could curl 225 pounds. Now, if you don't understand what that is, you go over there and grab one of the bars and do it like that. I was strong as a bull. I was a beast. I was a beast. And nobody, I was at home, mom and me. So when I stepped outside, back in those days, I had on my T-shirt and it was tight to the bone. You understand? So I stepped outside and I walked right in his face like this. I said, pick your bone now. His whole tenant changed. Well, well, you know, Brother Robert said, man, your woman is, she's a mess. You know that. Yeah, you know, I know that. She, she does talk too much. I said, you know she's a mess. And I told him the incident. I said, this is what happened. And she's not going to do that to me. I'm the assistant pastor. I will never allow her to do that to me. She won't do it to Evangel Hartsfield. She certainly is not going to do it to me. I said, she's out of place. She runs her mouth too much. She's disrespectful. And she's not going to do that to me. Of course, we said that for an hour. We forgot about all that kind of thing. We talked about other things. I don't know if we had cake or what, because he was greedy. He loved to eat. Hallelujah. Closing here, Yisrael. Yah warns us in verse 31. Debarin 12, 31. You should not do so to Yah, your Abba, for every abomination to Yah, everything that the world teaches you, it is created out of a discipline that hates Yah. Yeah. You don't do the way things of the world does things, which he hates. Again, you shall not do so to Yah, your Abba, for every abomination to Yah, which Yah, he saw, nay, he hates these abominations. He said they have done to their gods. For even then, sons and their daughters, they have burned in the fire to their gods. Yisra'yah, did they follow the same way? They gave their sons and daughters up to Mulech, and they burned them in the valley of Hinnon, did they not? They burn their sons and daughters. They're burning their babies. They're giving their babies up to lust. That they're burning in their flesh. They're having sexual improprieties when they're 12, 13, 14 years old. They're having STDs, sexual transmitted diseases. And they don't even know what a disease is. They're doing things that are beyond the comprehension of even their mothers. And they're performing things that are so vile, so repugnant, and so filthy in its dishonor to even speak about. About. There are certain things I will not speak about. But I know there are things that are horrible before God. Marriage is horrible in all things. And the blood is undefiled. It is not a, for me. It is not a filthy thing for a man and a wife to go to bed. It's right. I will not belittle that. I will not let that take a back seat to all the damn filth of this world. I won't. I don't give a damn how you feel about it. Teach our sons and our daughters the beauty of their bodies. Mothers teach them to love, to be keepers. And then you teach them tough things. You don't teach them a damn tough thing because there's nothing tough in you. You teach them lies and how to act like damn fools. They have given their sons and daughters over to the gods to be burned. Yah says this in verse 32. What thing? Soever I sava, I command you to shema, to watch, to observe, to fashion yourself asa. He says, do it. And, there, and you, you shall not add thereunto, nor diminish from it. You shall not take or add anything. The book of Gileana talks about that. If any man adds to this prophecy or takes from this prophecy, then the plague shall be added on to that man. So we don't take. Now this is what Yah says here, doesn't it? He said, don't add or diminish anything. And next week, I will begin with some things. We're still talking about what's coming out of this government, or the matter of this government. And so when our own minds govern us and rule us, and that is the thing that furnished the aspirations unto Yah, then you know it is a pigul. 
It is the shithuts. It is too ebah. It's filthy. It's perverted. It is idolatrous. Yah shows us his mishra, how we walk in his government, his dominion, his power. He shows us that in his laws, in his Torah, in his precepts, in his constitution, that we should follow. May the riches of Yah rest upon Kul Yisrael. May he strengthen you all. May he cause the light of your shore to shine upon you all. I'm wore out, believe me. You don't get up here and teach and preach and holler without a fight of opposition from the enemy. So I'm more thinner than thin. And I'm, I am like Jean Valjean. I'm hungry too. I'm ready to eat. Hallelujah. 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 May you have rock you all. Let us stand to our feet. You have rock you all, Yisraya. Appreciate you. Let's turn to Yerushalayim and all things. Yeah, we brought you for this day for all of your blessings, your riches. We pray for Yisraya. Pray for those that have joined us on the live broadcast, those that are here. We pray for Achot Blant and her family. We pray for all Yisraya as you guide us and teach us. Let this word be a season in our minds and give me the strength to continue on. As you the brach on the ach, the zochin, the achot, Yisraya guide them and teach us. Our bain, our babies, our little ones, our taf, the little babies and the arm. We pray for them all and strengthen the ima, the avat, the ish, the isha. We pray for those that desire the isha, the wife, granted to them. Those that desire and the isha, granted. Teach the older men, the older women, that they may teach the young ones the beauty to understand marriage, it's beautiful, and the beauty that even when there are trials and affliction, they teach them and show them the tough things of the Torah. Help them all, Yah. For you says that when a man finds a wife, he finds a tough thing, and he has favor of Yah. And the only way she can be a tough wife, good, as many would say, is because the Ima has taught her tough good things. That she understand the beauty of a wife and the good things of Torah. Tough things of Torah, the mighty thing. I pray, Yah, you help all of us. Beginning here with me. Beginning with our Zachin, our leader, Zachin Yaramaya, his house, his wife, his children, him above all. And all of us, Yah, we pray that in Yahshua's name, you touch us all, Zachin Biramin, his house, Zachin Mahalaya, Zachin Dawid, Zachin Shimri, all of the elderly men here, yeah, and our, ach, our young men astray. And those that join us, we pray for them and bless, I pray. Take us, Yah, into the fullness of your truth. That we will not fight, but honor you in all things. We need you above all things this day. We barak you for the reign in all things of your great blessings. We ask you to pour out your fulfillness, fulfillment upon us, your pleasure, your half hate. In the precious name of Yahshua Hamashi, heal us all, heal our achot. Bikaya la and also our Zachin Yaqob there in Fora and all those that need healing and our precious friend, our precious Ak, our precious brother. Our Ak lesser than Chicago, a young man that has been faithful ya to you has not been given over as his wife has died many years. Young man, my age ya, no wife, bringing up his daughter. What a blessing it would be to find a wife, not just a sex, pair, bed, partner, but a woman that's beautiful, pristine, and clean. Her heart sincere. She loves you, Yah. She's a bath of Torah. She speaks healing to his bosom. She calls life to flow in him, Yah. Not wicked and silly and foolish, full of sin and greedy. I pray that for my Ak, Yah. Ak Simeon. Ak. Shimri and all of our friends, our elderly men, even as they grow older, that they teach us even in friendship with the, with the elder, with the bath, and that they show us in their friendship, the beauty of friendship is not bad and holding hands, yeah, it's friendship, hallelujah. That the old women, when they become wanton, they don't begin to lust against you and the old men and forget their place and become desirous and wanton when they should teach the young women. And the old men become so asinine and so 
in such anguish instead of them teaching the young men the beauty of friendship and love their greedy and lustful yah knowing that their lifespan of their age and their rejuvenation of their ability to even have inspiration in their body it is gone yah it is dead help them all yah and help us all in your sure's name that we may walk in the light of your imat in the most precious prominent name we pray in your sure's name our hearts rejoice today for your blessings we shout hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Ya brat Israel.